Hi and welcome to our open stop motion film project and we have episode number uh, number 104 today we'll see if I can catch you can see the mouse have moved in <coughs> I had my granddaughter visiting today so I'm just I just came home and I have been uh, uh, delivering her back to her mom and mom and papa so and it's a top job with a six-year-old those of you who have one of those around know how it is. They can pull your teeth out. But they are very funny to be together with. But, uh, but we didn't get much uh, dollhouse or castle built today because we couldn't get the plywood we needed. So they were I need four millimeters plywood. So I have hope this is not pre recorded. I knew I had forgotten something. But uh So I haven't done a lot on this either because there is not much time. They go fast. With small people around. Tomorrow I have to have them again because the mother has to go to a meeting. So, and then I, both of them, both her and her big brother are coming. So, figure out something fun to do and we will maybe we will take a trip to the woods and see if all the leaves are on the tree and so on. <clears throat> yeah. 
here where we live in this little town is uh, uh, there is a harbor and uh, there is always a lot of toll toll sheep ships old toll ships It's a shipyard that uh, are making them ready for the summer period and trips to the Mediterranean and stuff like that and they are really beautiful to look at. And they are all very well kept. Fascinating with ships like that. Some of them are owned by very rich people because they are very expensive to keep in 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 good condition. It costs a fortune to keep them. It's not getting easier to get in here. Not much space. And when we are finished making texture in this one, we will paint it. See, see if we can manage to get it to look like a 
real tree. <coughs> I need to get some fresh coffee from back in the thicket. Without coffee, nothing works. We don't make any textures in them. It will looks like plastic, and we don't want that. Have to look like a real one. <coughs> I think I will remove that because my arms is up in the air. <coughs> a little 
Uh, oh. Oh. And then I have a problem. One hard drive is starting to act crazy, so I have to fix that. I have backup, but uh, I need to get it all on another one. And it takes a very long time because it's a extern hard drive and it's a USB, so you know. And it's two terabyte. So it's not that fast. With 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 videos, you use a lot of space to fast. Um, and I record this in HD, so it's uh, you. Fill them up quick. Very quick. Oh, I can take this. It's not difficult to make a tree, but it is very, very time consuming, I think.
Maybe we should hear what the Twit guys are up to today. My podcast. See. Company. I mean, Google True. is. Okay. An, I mean, I guess they can make well, a different. Uh, by the way, this prior uh, action regarding Google, they were forced to do the. Uh, you know, what do they call it, the forget me ruling or whatever. Yeah, but it's hard uh, because now they're saying, oh, but the right to be forgotten is meaningless because uh, it doesn't affect the entire Google ecosystem. Yeah, and that's just, an instance of Google applying it just to the EU. Well, uh, it's rightly so because uh, the right to be forgotten is technically ridiculous. <laughs> okay. And, um, uh, and shouldn't be applied to other countries where they have a little more enlightened point of view. Well, now, I don't, by the way, disagree <laughs> with you. I don't disagree with you on the... Um, these most recent action because I've always yeah. said it's a shame Google has gotten into these side businesses because it muddies the water for search. In the I U.S. it's actually, their right to do so. But. I don't actually mind that Google does these other things. What I mind is that the company presents itself as this um, robot. You know, it's a, it's a giant algorithm and that everything we do is cold and mechanical and logical when in fact it's just a company and it's just driving search toward its own services and I think that stinks. I I don't think there's a problem with Google getting into flight search or shopping search or whatever these other things are. Just I think the problem the is that they're equal. artificially ruining what should be truly organic search results. What if Google's response that, well, but if you look at these other companies like Yelp, the complaining companies and Trippet, their yep. business is growing by leaps right. and bounds. How are we hurting? Anyway, that's true. But how much more would they have grown if Google wasn't stifling them? You know, that, and that's the that's the central point. Google's business has also grown in leaps and bounds, and it's it's grown on the backs of these other companies who, by the way, they're scraping information from. They're artificially keeping down in search results. Right. Like it's the the problem isn't that these companies are all out there and they're all competing. The problem is most of those companies rely on Google to get their customers in the first place. And so, thanks for throwing us a bone, Google, but. You know, if they were just doing this truly organically, those companies probably would have grown a lot more. And by the way, what has been the greatest era yet so far in internet boom times? Yeah. So, yes, they've grown, but they would have grown a lot more. The ones that... And then the other uh, other, uh, defense that's been proposed, and this one comes from Danny Sullivan, a a search engine lineman, actually predates this uh, EU uh, uh, accusation, but goes back to the FTC documents that were released by the Wall Street Journal. Danny uh, says, well, that's just because they don't understand how search engines work. He says it's going to be very hard to demonstrate that Google is, in fact, prioritizing its results. I mean, I think what you have to do is say, well, uh, look at this result and then look at that result. And is that is that Google? I mean, it's hard to prove what Google's, what they're, what they're accusing sure. Google of. You can compare it to other search engines, which is one of the things they've yeah, done. Bing's, yeah. Bing's actually worse. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, you know, Bing does, I don't know. I, I do know that. because we did this, you know, Jeff, as you know, and we'll have a big argument uh, on uh, Twig because Jeff Jarvis thinks this is silly, I'm sure. Uh, but if you if you search... Uh, well, the palace guard always wants to protect the king, Leo. The point is... Well, what if, you search, if you search uh, Bing for video... Yeah. Uh, let's just see what the results are. Bing.com slash videos, Bing.com slash videos, PBS.org, dictionary definition of video... Today.com, Daily Motion, PBS Kids. YouTube's not even in the first page. Bing is. So do you tell me. Who do you Bing go to Bing video before you go way, to Bing, YouTube? By the way, just from a from a simply from a business practices standpoint, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Bing's what Bing's doing because Microsoft doesn't have monopoly in search. They can artificially uh, put see. their own services in front of us because right. they're not holding to those rules. By the way, that's and this exactly is the part of it I made comes. with Jeff. It said, <laughs> no, I mean, it's literally Google, the, because the they're point. so dominant, has to. People, well, why doesn't Apple allow, uh, you know, uh, whatever on their platform? You know, Apple doesn't have a monopoly in anything, so it doesn't matter, right? You know, that that's the that's the mm-hmm. right. the mm-hmm. central mm-hmm. issue. You have to have a monopoly, and then you not only have to have the monopoly, but abuse the monopoly power. That's right? the, that's the rule in the U.S. And that's that's that, monopoly. that is the U.S. I think you, you also, no? Or no? In the, yeah, it's, in pretty, the, it's pretty close. The Sherman Antitrust Act says that you can't have a monopoly. That's not illegal. 
Yeah, monopolies are not legal. You cannot use your monopoly to enter a new market, to, to leverage into a new market. Which is the product bundling thing that Microsoft right. got in trouble with, and which is what Google should be in trouble with, right? right. This, is a, this is the point. Um, I think the primary, I mean, I'm not an expert in antitrust, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I play one on TV, so what the hell. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, think that I, I believe that the primary difference between uh, the protection laws, it, right, trust or otherwise, between the United States and uh, the EU, is that the the laws here are concerned with competition, yes, but actually more with consumer harm. I mean, that's right. really the bigger component yeah, of it. Right. The EU is much more, more about competition. Yeah. And uh, they, it was interesting, I, I looked at the language they used, and they talked about consumer harm a lot in the case of Google, because I think that plays well, but I believe that the actual laws are more antitrust laws, are more concerned with fair competition. And, interesting. You know, it's six or one half dozen, I think. Way, but they're 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 abusing both obviously. Well, uh, so this does happen faster in the EU than, as you mentioned, than it does in the U.S. How how quickly <laughs> will we will we know? It doesn't happen fast though. I mean, yeah, it, it could still be it could be weeks. a year. You know, they have ten weeks to respond. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then but it the happen. then she's going to make some kind of a decision about what the penalty should be. Right. They can appeal that, it, right? and they, you know, it goes on and on. Right. I mean, Honestly, one of the – there's a monetary fine of up to $6 billion mm-hmm. that is one of the possible penalties. But that will never happen. Case. That yeah, that, I doubt that will happen. But, you know, Microsoft did have to pay $2 billion in their case with the EU. Yeah, over time, but that was multiple fines. True, that's true. Yeah. I mean, the biggest so, antitrust fine in Europe was uh, Intel. Intel, and It was right? something like $1 or $1.1 billion. Uh, which is was still a fraction of the possibility. I don't remember exactly what Intel's yeah. revenues were or how high that could have been. Um, I would imagine Google would be on the line for something similar. But I also think Google's going to settle this case. I think they will uh, curb their behavior to meet the needs of the EU and only do it there, and that will be the end of that. And they'll, they'll probably, I don't know how else it's going to work, but I think that's, I think that's how this is going to end up. Yeah. But it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen <laughs> you know, months yeah, from years now. from now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll drag it out. But you're just gonna you're gonna sit on the sidelines and cheer. <laughs> no, I, I, it's actually you know what it's it's not it's not a celebration because there's a lot of disappointment on the back end of this. They should have done this years ago. The FTC should have done this. If the FTC and the EU both together were suing Google for the same things, this might have made differences in many more people's lives and in many more companies' fortunes. It would have been a bigger deal. I think that this company has kind of run amok over intellectual property, over privacy, over competitors, and many other things for a long time. And um, I'm glad it happened. It needs to happen. And I need to say this, I should say too, it's not important to me that Google is punished. It's just important to me that the right thing happens. If there's a huge investigation, and it's like, you know, actually it wasn't as bad as we thought. That's an okay outcome too. Right. I just think that the, the literally the gatekeeper of the internet needs to be held to a standard and needs to be monitored. I agree with you, actually. Yeah. I know people find that odd, but I, I do agree with you because they have so much power. Uh, they so have, much power. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, here, Microsoft. Listen, I I felt so strong that Microsoft needed to be broken up. When you find out how that company operated 15 years ago, it's infuriating. But when you compare it to Google today. Yeah. It's a tiny slice of humanity that they're impacting, right? You know, no, Mary Jo's laughing. Yes, no, I, yes. <laughs> I think we but, all agree. You know, no. yeah. you know what? The, the Microsoft comparison, though, I think plays more into the other half of this case, which is the Android mm-hmm. part of it, right? Like the comparison sure. shopping. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting, and I feel like that's been yeah. something that's been going on. But now they're opening this investigation into Android, and are they forcing? their OEMs to do certain things. That is an exact parallel to what happened in the Microsoft right. DOJ case, right? And There's a difference. And Here's which, the biggest which difference, which Google makes of Android available oh. in a different form I that know. people but don't have to... Of, that's well, not the same, though. You may it, want it better, like but it's saying, not like Microsoft Windows. There was an open source version yeah, of Windows. You there use. wasn't. But that no. open source Windows uh, version, or the open source Google Android version, whatever it is, AOSP, AOSP is, yeah. is so not Android. Well, you know, it's Android it's minus not Android Google. As we think of it. Right? It's Android yeah. minus Google. Yeah. But that but seems that's... fair. I don't well, know. But... I, I feel like 
if without the store um, and yeah, without well, if you want a lot Google, of those you should have to do these maps. things. Who it, wants an Android phone, phone without Google Maps? Oh, I agree. Yeah. Who would ever want this? Well, thing? Nokia or yeah. Microsoft did with X, but well, I mean people. Yeah. You know, I, I, I it's not, <laughs> no, nobody. I understand. People want that. Anyone who was educated about the purchase would never want that thing. Except that's, that uh, Amazon does, and that's what Amazon releases. Um, I, 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 you have right, to be. But, I feel like but, you but have to be. By the way, who bought an Amazon huge. phone with not Google Maps on it? No, well, no, but a lot of Amazon uh, tablets with uh, Android. Those aren't used for GPS. Yeah. But you also you have to be Disney, such yeah. a huge, huge company to be able to do what Amazon's doing, right? Like you can't be a smaller company and possibly go out there without your own. It's funny I mean, because you won't have your own store, Apple right? doesn't offer iOS to anybody, right. so they don't have to make any agreements with anybody. Nope. So they're well, not at risk, where even though they're dominant, but, but what, Google, by the way, which makes a choice, does, gives you a choice, is in trouble because like, of the I'm choice. Gonna listen. I could go off. I could go out of the weeds on this. That, what happens when Apple does enter into agreements with other companies? I'll tell you what happens. They go into antitrust court with the books thing, or they're the company taking no risk and and reaping all of the rewards, and the companies they partner with are taking all the risks and getting none of the rewards, and that's what happened when Apple partners with somebody. Wireless carriers that got screwed, uh, especially AT&T in the beginning because, you know, AT&T's network was so terrible, AT&T's network was so terrible, and then you realize, you know, actually, this, the iPhone was freaking broken is what the problem was. Right. Like, it's classic. You know, it's just, and that's a completely different topic. I don't want to get enough too far on this yeah. one, but yeah. Apple's decision, and, and this has been a long-running thing from the days of the Mac, you know, back in the early days, uh, to go it alone, is one strategy, you know. Partnering with other people is another strategy. They both have benefits and they both have uh, problems. You know, Microsoft partners, Google partners, and Apple doesn't. I mean, there's just two different ways of doing business. But there are, you know, it's not perfect. Neither one of them is perfect. And uh, EU regulator in a chat room. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Marguerite, nice to have you here. <laughs> Uh, Maybe you could explain to us how that is pronounced. Actually, I, I can do that for you right now. This is uh, Forvo, <laughs> which is a site where people voluntarily record the pronunciation. Oh. Uh, we used this when there was that uh, volcano in uh, ice in Finland or wherever. Yes. Iceland, yes, no, yes, one yes, could, yes. no one could pronounce. Uh, so here are two Danish people pronouncing her name. You ready? Yes. Makaiti Vestaya. Much easier, Yikes. I think, than what we thought. <laughs> Now, first of all, Here's that a, in no way resembles the word that it's on the Let's opinion. get the second opinion. Okay. Okay, I think okay. there's agreement. <laughs> there was a, I was going to say that. It sounds like my So agreement. apparently there's a Q in there somewhere. <laughs> so I was wrong about the I. No, actually, I wasn't. It was Magaita. Oh, forget it. Just let's go to call her Marguerite Vestiger. Like if you had provided me with five possible pronunciations, I would have <laughs> come up with you know five. Magaita Vestia. For this one. Magaita Vestia. I love it. Oh, we Americans are so limited in how we think of things uh, like pronunciation. Sure. Anyway, uh, EU regulator in the chat room, uh, also known as Magaita Vestia, says. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, what their real issue, and I'm looking at the the actual EU release from my, and the uh, and the real uh, issue is whether Google has breached EU antitrust rules by hindering the development and market access of rival mobile operating systems applications and services. So it's it's well, again, not so like, much the deals again, they make, but do they hinder rivals? Well, actually, there are three things. Um, in fact, I've got a link to that uh, ZD article. It's yeah. pretty good about this. But again, if you think about it from that perspective, it's about competition, yes. right? It's not, were consumers harmed because they couldn't get Google Maps? No, that's not the issue. The issue was, were, do these exclusive licensing deals preclude another mapping service, another email service, another whatever Google makes from coming on board on Android devices? And, you know, we saw this with Windows. I'm sure it's true in the Mac as well. Um, it's hard to beat something that's built in. Most people don't bother. You know, if you if you sign into a device and your email is configured in whatever mail app is on your device, why would you look at another mail app as a normal human being? People who like us, people who listen to the show, are technical and know about this stuff. 
yeah, they might. But why would a normal human being do that? You know? So it wouldn't. And that's why you bundle. You want to keep people locked into your stuff. And tying and bundling was the crux of the Yeah, it Microsoft was, wasn't it? Case, yeah, the right. Internet Explorer. And, yeah. Right. So, oh, and, you know, it, I mean, what's, what's interesting is, is after Microsoft finally, 10 years later, was no longer under the scrutiny of the Department of Justice, they started bundling again. So now... You're seeing Microsoft bundle things like one you know what ride. They, I, I asked them about that, and they said, well, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just as easy to fall off as it is to no, fall it's, on. You know, I, I have I, like the Samsung like Galaxy Edge. This has OneNote and Skype. It's got a, it comes with a Microsoft folder. I think that's By the way, you, you've, you've seen the news about that, years. right? Not oh. in the United States, it doesn't. No. Oh, will well, you buy that thing from AT&T or yeah, uh, Verizon? Yeah, T-Mobile and Sprint, Those, yes. Those apps are gone. You're kidding. The wireless no. carry takes them off. What? Yeah. Maybe I should help Leo pronounce my great the best there. It's not like you can't re download them. I mean, but the yeah, problem, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the point is the tyranny of the default. Yes. Right? Yeah. The tyranny of the default. You know, why would, it, like, you know, on, even on like an HP computer, HP would just make great computers these days. Mm-hmm. Bundles these apps that I think are a little strange. There's like a kind of a photo. You can app, always like make fun of each other when we are talking oh, and yeah. different languages. Different language, like I am in these nauseous. Like they sour over time. Milk apps, and I immediately disable those. It's difficult to do right. A wonderful aspect of Android, but you can't delete it. Well, depending on the app. Yeah, right. no, you can delete you can everything it. except for those apps that the carrier or, and or the manufacturer lock in there. They have to By the way, let's, we know Google, let's look at the carriers next, because if there's a problem oh, there in the mobile space, oh, yeah. I'll go with, I'll go with these guys. <laughs> By the way, are the gateway to The main right thing is here? that <coughs> we can understand yeah, each other. usually buy, so. uh, as you do, I know, all unlocked uh, yeah. phones. But now I do, yeah. Well, the last time I got a Samsung Note, it was the Hong Kong. And there was weirdness there. I'm no, like, yeah, yeah, but I find you know like, a lot of my Windows phones are from other places, right? And the uh, the 930 I have is from Thailand. Right. Um, I just restored it in the 535, and it comes up with you know in a different language, and you know it's an entertaining couple of minutes when you have to struggle <laughs> through the. Uh, <laughs> you know, that is. The non- what where do I find <laughs> the English? Non-Latin language that you're not familiar with? It's good. So this is this is the phone as it comes, and you see there's a little folder called oh. Microsoft. <laughs> Sorry. It's not on the front page. It's like the second page in. And it's just got three apps. It's got, you know, OneDrive, OneNote, and Skype. But I'm sure Microsoft's very happy to have that there. It's better than nothing. I mean, I, I uh, to me, Microsoft apps in no way describes those things, you know. No, these are um, universal apps. Everybody probably, I, I would download them otherwise. So. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to segregate things into folders on my uh, mobile device, I wouldn't do it that way. It is. I might, I might have like productivity apps or office apps. I don't really care who made it. That's not. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not how I organize my apps. Oh, it's like, oh, Microsoft, thanks. Delete. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, to, to, in Google's uh, favor, uh, they do encourage uh, the rootability of their phones. They do. They don't, you know, actively discourage that. You can, you can Leo, do anything let me just, you want. Google no is a virus. Yes. And yes. this is. <laughs> Android is, uh, this is the one time where, like, Steve Jobs and I could hug each other and cry. We're so on the same right. page. Like, his whole thing about Android and stealing from Apple, I, I have never agreed with anything in the technology world as a, like I do with that. I, I Android, I still have a hard time dealing with Android. I just, when I look at it, it's like, oh, I just, oh, just I love it. I mean, I actively it. love it. I just, it's so great. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I celebrate. <laughs> I do. I love my Android phone. That's funny. And and one thing that has happened, consumers have spoken out, and so there's a lot less of that, you know, cruft on yeah. here than there used to. No, I know, but you know, Samsung. How, but but to, to, you know, how you get to this point, right? Like, how, right? How do we make up all this time against Apple? Oh no, of, no, I agree with you. It's out, taken Android, you know, uh, what is it, even. five versions to really get clean. But it's yeah. but now it's pretty good, and of course the EU is going to shut it down and. <laughs> Actually, I think the phone. case on the Android is a lot more tenuous uh, than the search case. Whatever that's worth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I have to say, if, if you're punishing Google because they didn't take the road that Apple took, which is to make it a closed ecosystem,
ecosystem. Sure. Uh, I mean, you got to if you're going to do that, <laughs> it just doesn't. Yeah. I mean, so you mean the mistake Google made was offering a free version of their operating system? Right. Yeah, I, I, and I would just point out too. I, I don't, you know, Android is uh, I guess eighty percent ish of mobile devices or eighty percent of smartphones. I don't remember the exact number. Um, they don't really have the same kind of monopoly. And, and, and let well, alone there's lots Europe. of good choices. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there there are a lot of the bigger industrial countries in Europe, France, the UK, Germany. You know, the iPhone is going to have decent market share. It's not going to, you know, five percent or ten percent. It's going to, it's going to be higher than that. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, this one's a little, this one's a little less clear to me. Well, we'll see. And the good news is, we'll see sooner than later. God, I remember when the DOJ uh, prosecution of Microsoft began. That was right about when we began Tech TV, and then six years later, right about when we ended Tech TV, that finished up. Which is perfect. <laughs> it that was all on and on. It went on so long. It did. And of course, the I, highlight you know, of it was Bill Gates' 80 hour deposition. Yeah, which, by the way, I had on videotape. <laughs> did you? And it was, oh yes, it was a box of videotapes. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you think about like um, spending a weekend watching like something like Lost or The Sopranos, this is nothing like that. It is. <laughs> It's more depressing than the Godfather trilogy. It's like, it is the most awful viewing experience ever. Uh, it's terrible. But it's a, but you've got it's a piece of history you got there. Do you still have it? All the videos. I wonder if that's online. I do. I, it's in a box somewhere. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't uh, hidden or anything, right? You no, know, but it wasn't like they. No, you could get anyone could get it. it yeah, you know, but get it. the. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they filtered out the best bits for you. You, you know, the, you got like the dump of it. Like here it is, you know. Yeah. And it, it's up to you to sit there. It's gonna be, you know, hundreds of hours or whatever it is. It's terrible. Here's a uh, cut down, five minute cut down on YouTube. What not to do during a DOJ deposition? Uh, whoever, whoever advised Gates to be like, Google, Microsoft is the world's most respected computer software company. Some people. Agree with that? Some people would. What's your opinion? I think we are the most. If you took took it on a statistical basis, <laughs> yes, we'd be the most respected <laughs> software company. You watched how many hours of this? <laughs> oh, I, by the way, I think I got like seven minutes of it. <laughs> Apart from uh, the timing issue, would you agree that uh, Internet Explorer is defined here correctly as Microsoft's web browser? Oh, did you actually read what was in there? Uh, yeah, read the uh, first sentence. I can read you the whole thing if you'd like. Okay. But it seems strange. If you're trying to use this dictionary, you might as well read what it says. I mean, you could show it to me. Yeah, I'll read it to you and I'll show it to you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. The good old Bill Gates days. <laughs> <laughs> this is, he gets even feistier. Oh, man. Uh, the Microsoft Computer Dictionary, uh, 1997 edition, defines killer app uh, as follows. There's two definitions. Is he drinking? Is that a Pabst Blue Ribbon there? The first definition is an application of such popularity and widespread standardization that it fuels sales of the hardware platform or operating system for which it was written. Do you agree with that definition? You're saying to me that there's more in there and you're just reading me part of it? I'm going to read you the second definition as well. Uh, so you're right asking me about it without reading me the whole thing? No, sir. Yes, two definitions here. You're familiar with dictionaries, I think. Sometimes they have more than one. Oh, that was term, not a right? good thing to say. Sometimes yeah. terms have more than one meaning, so right. it's actually fairly appropriate that dictionaries would give the two different meanings. Oh, Generally, before you'd ask. Okay, we're just gonna. That's actually still going on. That's a live. Feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like. It. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It is brutal. It's. Uh, yeah. I hope I never get asked for a deposition. That's all. There's so many books, you know, that were written about those days. At that time, of the trial, you know, and all the stuff they had covered about Microsoft, it was very interesting. But it was a, a very, a very unflattering portrait of the company, and um, I'm, I can't wait to read stuff like that about Google. I am <laughs> very excited about this. I, by the way, the judge presiding over the trial when he saw that videotape actually laughed out loud. He did. Sure. <laughs> I think I was there in court. Were you? Oh, that must have been a so. mad moment. <laughs> That's amazing. It really is amazing. <laughs> uh, okay, and by the way, I think most of that is on YouTube. Is it? Uh, yeah, if you really have a hankering, you can 
there's, there's got to be an irony there somewhere, but sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Google's got it. Look, what happens when you look at Bill Gates' deposition on Bing? Oh, you know what? That's a good question. <laughs> it really Just is. Just a compare good. search engine. <laughs> video. I'll look up uh, Bill Gates' deposition video, right? That's what we want to know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, right, Bill, by the way, oh, no, was Bill, uh, no, Bing.com videos. Was yeah, but what's funny but, is they're all YouTube videos from Bing.com videos. It's a really yeah. like, let's go, go to our site, and then we'll take you there. Yeah. Sure. God, he was such a jerk. <laughs> I love how beloved Bill Gates is, you know. I uh, well, think, he turns things around. Do you think he was a jerk? Do you think he was a world. jerk? Really? I do, but I think he's changed a lot. But he was kind of jerky then. Yeah. Like, totally. uh, like wise ass acre, wise acre yeah. kind of. Yeah. Well, you know, it, uh, Apple had an element of this as well. When you're scrappy, underdog, and then you're on top of the world. If something doesn't flip in your head. You don't stop. You know, start acting differently. Yeah, yeah, you're no, still, that's right. You know, like you still. It's like Uber. Acting that way. Yeah, yeah, Uber's like fighting scrappy little Uber. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Steve Jobs. Yeah. Yeah. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Love him. <laughs> what I, think, I think we've heard that a bunch. <laughs> but I think I think you could forgive somebody like Bill or, or Steve because, uh, first of all, you didn't have to deal with him directly. <laughs> so it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, yeah what a character. Uh, I'm not sure I would want to have been in the inner circle. But uh, they did build ma- amazing things. No, you did listen. These the, the accomplishments of these yeah. men is unassailable. Yeah. Uh, I, of course. Yeah. I mean, you might not want to work for them. I'm not going to go away on vacation with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. yeah. It's hard enough reporting on them. I can tell you. That. Well, and that's the thing is, you guys did have more direct contact. The only yeah. closest I ever came to Bill Gates was a com one Comdex one year at a Spencer the Cat party when we we danced together. Oh, nice. Well, yeah. well not together, but he was like right there. Sure. White man. He must be a good dancer. (laughs) Sticks out his butt, bites his lower lip. It's a beautiful thing. Nice. Nice. Let's take a break. Unless you want to say anything more about this Google thing. (laughs) Once again, an hour in and we're we're already finished one story. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the big story. You know, after all these years, we've gotten really good at making this thing just run like an oil machine. (laughs) You know that we will spend much time on it in a couple hours on this week in Google. This is going to be, and Jeff will have the opposite point of view. So um, it's good. To, it's good to have that uh, little moment. I do want to mention our uh, our sponsor, Prosper, before we go on because they pay the bills. <laughs> I, I I I hope you don't mind me saying this, Paul. But it was funny because you sent Lisa Larry saying, "Why did you pay me so much money?" And yeah, I well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was it? Why was that check so big? Well, you could thank Pr- Prosper, frankly, and our other great <laughs> sponsors. I often have to ask these kind of questions. <laughs> Do you have a low sense of self worth to your self esteem? I don't feel like I. I, I kind of mailed it in that. <laughs> I. I, I, I Away. I don't think Bill Gates ever asked that question. <laughs> Why? Why did I get so much money? Oh, uh, our show today brought to you by those great people at Prosper, a very great uh, a- example of how the internet is changing the way we do so many things, making transactions f- f- nearly friction-free. In this case, <coughs> money. Uh, you know, the, in the past, the, you know, you'd go to, a, you could ask a friend, oh, that's, that's, or a relative, that's not going to go well. Uh, maybe at first, and then it goes south, I guarantee you, you will lose the relationship. Uh, you could go to uh, uh, Jimmy the Greek down at the bar. I wouldn't, He's always you could come to go to a bank guys. and put on a necktie and all that stuff. Now there's another choice. Prosper is a marketplace that brings Even people if you want don't agree money with what they say, then Do people want to borrow money? It kind of simplifies the transactions. Much more direct drive. You could get, in fact, if you thought of it, if you're interested, a low fixed rate loan from Prosper.com in as little as five days, as much as $35,000, and use it for just about anything you want. I, you know, Paying off high rate credit cards is one of the most common uh, uses for these loans. Uh, because the rate is so much lower than what you're paying on the credit card, it's just it's the right thing to do. Just consolidate all that debt. You could fix up the house. You could put it into your business. Tech can be a really dry stuff. Next but, people uh, who need money with those who want to invest. Don't rack up more debt on your credit cards. These guys understand to 
make it don't entertained. Have, don't don't share one bathroom with fifteen people. Entertaining. Oh. <laughs> Remodel. To check your low rate instantly without affecting your good credit, go to prosper.com slash twit. And for a limited time, Prosper's offering Twit viewers a fifty dollar Visa gift card with your low interest loan. You can get up to thirty five thousand dollars in your course in five days and a fifty dollar Visa gift card. Go to prosper.com slash twit. I do know what they are talking about. Prosper.com slash twit. Windows Weekly, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Uh, <laughs> continuing on, let's talk about Microsoft. Win I just got my uh, update on my 1520 for Windows 10 mobile. So, uh, I think I did. <laughs> well, I'm on the fast track. And it said I had an update, but I don't know. You know, I, I'm not looking at it right now. So is it coming? Well, you know, last week when we had Gabe all on the show... He said he, Friday. He said Friday, right? And I and think he I got something. Time. Yeah, but I he think I... gave us a time. You didn't get something? Yeah. No, well, I was just going to say what happened on Friday at the time when he said it was going to come across. They, they had a server error. Oh. And so everybody's hitting the server trying to get oh. the build. And then they had to take it offline for two hours. So a few people got the build, and then they had to take it down and fix it. So because various things were blocking okay. people get being able to get the bits. So it was it was a little rocky, right? Yeah, a little, it was a little. What happens? What's, I think I'll <laughs> probably tell you how rocky it was. It was uh, <laughs> one p.m. was the time that one p.m. Eastern was the time this thing was going to go out. I had it on my phone at uh, I think it was five p.m. So that's why I didn't notice because that's I, was rocking. I didn't rush at one p.m. Yeah. Eastern to get it. I just waited. The awesome it. thing, yeah. Leo, is once you finally do get it installed, it is really terrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you got that going. For you. <laughs> it's not good. I okay. So the first thing it asked me to do, it says make a password for this phone which I thought I did, but anyway, make a password for this phone, and then I entered a password, and then I kept clicking OK, and nothing happened. I couldn't uh, actually yeah. do anything. Like, none of the buttons were live anymore. No, then you did get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, there I you got go. it, huh? <laughs> That's how you so first, let, let's say, let's say what was supposed, what people were supposed to see, it was, it was going to have a lot of new things, right? Mm -hmm. It was going to have the Spartan browser, yeah, the new browser, yeah, for yeah, the first time, yeah. a bunch of the new, Universal apps, so Outlook Mail and Outlook Calendar were going to be right. in there. And remember, um, too, a lot more phones. That was the big deal. That yes, really a lot more phones. Phone. Oh, yeah, this my is... 1520 got something. Yeah. Right. This is what we expected from the initial release. It was right. a nice list. Yeah. Yes. So then when people got it, a lot, well, I can tell you this week on my Twitter feed, everyone almost in my feed is complaining that they don't like how the new Universal apps look because they feel like what made them and if anyone wondering what I'm listening apps to has gone away and now they look pretty much like Android apps. Twit. And Netcast with Leo and Laporte and my Twitter feed not. Paul Tarot. Uh, but, you know, I, I think I understand why they're doing this. Part of the, even though universal apps means universal across Windows platforms, part of what Microsoft is doing, especially with Office when they talk about universal, is they're taking the code base that is also the code Windows base for iOS Weekly. and Android, and they're trying to use as much of that as possible in building these apps. So they're going to start looking more alike, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, yeah. Um, but people didn't like that too much. Um and that, that seems to be one of the biggest bones of contention. Plus, you couldn't use any of your Office files, uh, uh. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, because that has been disabled in this build. Oh. Uh, they're in the midst of redoing the Office Mobile Hub, so uh, you can't use that anymore. I think alarms don't work now. I mean, there's just a bunch of things that, because it's a test build. A lot of networking works. issues, too. You know, so there are people who yeah. can't enable or disable Wi-Fi or airplane mode, things like that. Yeah. So don't do it if you're not willing to take a chance exactly. with a technical preview, right? Exactly. It's and not you know, done, I, but... Yeah. I was so happy after I started reading uh, people's reports that 
the, you didn't get the it. icon could not get this build because yeah. I was thinking about taking it and I'm like, oh, thank mm -hmm. goodness I couldn't mm -hmm. get that build. <laughs> yeah, because you oh, use it as your day-to-day -day phone. You don't want to do yeah. that. I, no, and I have an another extra phone iPhone, too. I have an oh, extra iPhone. I was going to say, you, you, yeah, use a, use a second phone if you yeah. can. Yeah, um, yeah sure. The, the, here's the problem, and we don't really have this in the notes, I don't think, but I've heard this now from multiple people, including uh, Lance McCarthy recently, where, you know, people will install this build and they'll say, oh, you yeah, know, this is really kind of garbage. Oops. I want to go back to Windows Phone 8.1. And Microsoft actually has two different utilities that will do this. Leo, you used one to port your 1520. <laughs> oh, yes, that was a Nokia. Well, by the way, Nokia you too. suddenly have company because I, I believe you were the first person on earth to have a brick of phone I, using I'm that. not alone, all right, am I? Not a lot of people are bricking your phone. I know. Because I got a lot of people it's saying. really weird. Yeah. It, it, this, this has never really happened. And uh, the sheer number of people that are having this issue is kind of troubling. I've actually brought a few phones back using the, those recover, one of those recovery tools, um, and I've had no issues, but a lot of people have. Yeah. So, yeah. lots of good reasons to try this build. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, that's it's one thing to uh, have an update that you're not crazy about. It's another thing to brick your phone. Right. Right. Yeah. I was able to send my phone to a good home. A fellow did brain surgery on it, took the screen off, put it on his. And oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm a trendsetter. What can I say? <laughs> I, I, I do think you were first. <laughs> not a good, and not in a good way. Um, some people are not getting. Yeah. yeah they let's thought talk they about were going to get. What is? Right. This is interesting. Yeah. Good. I know. Well, you're the one who I think first pointed this out, or one of the first people who did. So no, keep some, you weren't? Okay. No. Some people, when they started trying to get the Windows 10 mobile build, they were getting something else um, instead of that when they were downloading. And it turns out, I think it was Windows Phone GDR2. Is that right? Or wow. You, yeah, yeah, GDR2. It's, it's like, like getting a golden, GDR2. A golden yeah. ticket in your Wonka bar. <laughs> That's great. Which, by the but way, is a... <laughs> you don't have to have GDR2 to have this, this build, right? Like, no, it's not a no, prerequisite. No, no, no one has this right now. Except for, I will uh, some get some, some new copy. Oh, only 640. Okay. Um, yeah, so some people got that, and then that was a mistake, but they ended up getting that. And I don't know if afterwards they also got Windows Yeah, you um, can get 10? some of them do, some of them don't. And on, okay. on my... Um, I... kept it on one of my phones, you know, because I want to, you know, every once in a while something new will crop up that, you know, is new to this release. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, the, the way it's supposed to work is it would just keep going, you know, but I yeah. guess you could just keep it on that build if you wanted to. I mean, there's no reason yeah. to. <laughs> you don't want to. Yeah. It was, let's just say Friday probably was a really tough day when you were sitting in Gabe Alls chair. <laughs> Poor Gabe. I feel bad. You know, you met him. He's a great guy. He's great. Um, that was not a good day. No, <laughs> that was just not a good no. day. Yeah, I saw him at one point. Somebody said to him, Gabe, why aren't you answering my question? And he said, I'm getting 300 tweets per minute. I'm <gasps> sorry, I'm doing my best. Yeah, 300 <laughs> tweets a minute. Wow. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> wow. He had a bad day. He had a bad day. A no good, terrible, very bad day. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I've seen people worrying about this because they said, a lot of people are saying, if this is mid-April right now, and Microsoft said Windows 10 is going to RTM this summer, and things are this rough, can they really do this? Um, and you know, one, one thing I'll point out there is we haven't heard that that summer date means every version of Windows 10. It may just mean Windows 10 for the desktop, it may not mean mobile. We don't know that level of granularity, so they may have a little more time. Uh, plus, once they RTM, especially on the phone, they still can keep updating the operating system because then the carriers and the handset makers both have to test it. So that usually delays it by quite a bit as well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. You know, it, it does look very rough from everything I've read. And, and actually, uh, <laughs> from past history, we know with Windows Phone, you know, even if these things are RTM'd on the same day, so maybe it's August or whatever, Yeah. Windows 10 is done. You know. um, yeah. Between that date and the date that carriers actually put the software on the phone, months go by, and Microsoft ships further updates. They have RTM Windows Phone in the past, understanding that updates would go out after the release. This is something we saw with, uh, I don't remember if it was 8.0 or 8.1, one, 
when they finally you know opened the developer preview program, it must have, it must have been eight one, where we started seeing updates after the supposed final right. version of it, because that's how that works. And so, yeah. you know, that could be part of the planning as well. I think it is. I mean, I think even after Windows 10 RTMs on any platform, the plan it's is... It's so hard to update. see the texture Every on this uh, yellow stuff here. Yeah. ...with new features and fixes, so it's not really done. <laughs> it's never uh, done. Paul, there's, there's somebody else on Twitter, um, one of our... One of our who goes by Sherlock Holmes? He yes. he said he got he got GDR two on the Lumia seven thirty when he was downloading it. Yeah, I'm trying. To, I can't remember which one I got it on now. It's pretty yeah. funny. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was a mess, but um, hopefully there's another build around the corner. <laughs> Did, well, and, and Paul, you, you mentioned there are two tools to, to uh, <clears throat> roll it back. What, what are the two tools people want to know? So uh, the first one is called the Windows Phone, I think it's just called the Windows Phone Recovery Tool, uh, which is supposed to work with every Windows Phone device. And so right now only um, Lumias are getting uh, Windows 10 preview, so it, you know, it doesn't really matter now. But in the future that might be more important if you have an HDC or Samsung or whatever. Uh, um, and so the difference between the two tools, I think, other than the UI, is that the Lumia version is just for Lumias, and I think the Windows Phone recovery tool is for, um, you know, all Windows Phone devices. Yeah, Windows Phone recovery tool. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Jo's not going to do it anyway. Uh, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I am definitely <laughs> no, going to really wait don't. because, yeah, when I was watching what people were doing and going through, I'm like, you know what, I, I'm i interested in seeing this, but I'm not that interested. <laughs> well, you know, you know Saturday coming. morning, uh, the day after, I got up and I think, you know, this is going to be a good day. It's not going to be like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I started upgrading phones, and I got Windows good. Phone, you know, Update 2, GDR2, and I thought, all right, I need to slow this down. <laughs> oh, so you were one of the like, people who did. This, this is just weird, mm. you know. Because originally I was like, I'm going to put this on a bunch of phones, you know. Yeah. And I think oh. I got it on two or three, and I actually mm. rolled back yeah. at least two. Wow. Uh, that bad. It's just not worth it. Oh. So don't worth. do it, kids. You may be tempted. Don't do it. Uh, <clears throat> some new low-end handsets. When are we going to... I want to get a new... Flagship High-end handset. Yeah, not, 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 yeah. not in the offing. One of the new things that Microsoft does is, uh, since it's taken over the Lumia line, is it will announce a, a, a low-end Lumia handset, as it does, I think, every three days. And uh, it will announce the pricing in U.S. dollars, and then it will say uh, this will be available at whatever time in EMA, in Asia, in Italy, in Indonesia, and wherever it is, but never in the United States. And so the pricing is always in U.S. dollars. <laughs> But the, the device itself is it's not available there. So, yeah. That's because yeah, American it's... greenbacks are the gold standard for currency everywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, if you're going to pick All one, right. they could, I mean, what? If they could pick one. <laughs> what one are you going to pick? Rubles? Well, I would pick the one that was the biggest uh, market for maybe. which the phone yeah. sold. <laughs> so, but you know, I would pick maybe the case. That might be offensive. That might be culturally offensive. Okay. All right. Could be. I figured they'd just say, hey, we're an American company. We're going to use American greenbacks, even though. Ha ha. I see US dollars, and I think, oh, that's exciting. I want to buy this. I want to buy it. Right. dollars. Where do I do that? No, I don't. That's a side effect they didn't think about. Or they just don't care. Or they don't care. So the 540 dual SIM Lumia. How much is that? Low-end American Another Snapdragon 200, you know, like, because we needed another one of those. Five-inch screen, 720p. Why do they do this? Why? 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 Why do we do we need another one? If this sounds a lot like other phones that they've announced in the past three months, I, I, I'm with you. I don't know. I don't know. It, it comes with example? Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a selfie phone, right? I mean, or actually, it is. It has a selfie. Okay, camera. so. But is the dual SIM what makes it different? No. They're all dual SIM. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, the dual SIM is very common. 
dual SIM, what makes it different? No. They're all dual SIM. Yeah, I mean, a lot yeah. of dual SIM is very common. Yeah, they're, they're all dual yeah. SIM. That's how you know yeah. it's not going to be sold. You know, 720p is about as high as they're going to go these days on yeah. the screen. Yeah, Five inch screens, fine. you know. Um, it's fine. Well, somebody said they should dug at 200. Seriously, like, seriously. <laughs> but I just, I just what? don't know what the differentiator Did is. Did you get these things on sale? The, 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 <laughs> you know, they come, they are, they're in like a cereal box yeah. or something. Like, yeah. We got a truckload of, a truckload of Snapdragon 200s and. Hey, uh, who ordered the two million Snapdragon 200 <laughs> processor? Oh, that guy got laid off. <laughs> what are we gonna do with these things? Make more phones. Make more Lumias. You like the blue though, the new HDL. I do like the Scion. Yeah. It's called the Scion. Cyan. Cyan. That's confusing. Company's name is Blue. Phone's name is the Cyan. The update's oh, name you're is talking Cyan. About the I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what the are you Cyan talking about? Oh, so the Lumia is called a Cyan? The Lumia Blue is called Cyan. I never No, I no, I'm confused. Mary Joe, are sorry. you following this? <laughs> okay. Too many Cyans, not enough bitter <laughs> Confused. So Let's talk about sorry, the blue HD LTE. It's a better phone. Right. Says Paul. So this one's available in the United States. Oh. It's $200. Uh, Ooh, that's no a little pricey. I don't know. But it's a mid-level phone. It's got a new processor, too. It's a Snapdragon 410. Um, it's a 5-inch screen, 720p. It's uh, nice construction. It's got a same camera, eight, well, same rear camera, 8 megapixel rear camera. Um, it's not a Lumia device, so you don't get the Lumia apps, which could be a problem for some people. But... Um, when you compare it to say like um, the most comparable <laughs> Lumia is probably like an 830 Lumia 830 in the United States that thing no contract is over $400 uh, if you buy a no contract from an international like on Amazon it's about it was 170 ish dollars but it doesn't do LTE so the, the blue device the blue Win HD uh, LTE is Two hundred dollars, so it's twenty five dollars more, but it does LTE. It does have dual SIMs. I don't actually think that's a big deal here in the US, but it does do dual SIMs if you want that. Um, it's it's pretty good. I mean it's 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 a nice phone. I mean, I, I don't immediately dispense this one sort of in my head like I do with the, the Lumia five whatever we're calling it, five forty. Um, God these model numbers are like old smobiles from the seven. It's like <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> All the way. Well, it's all tied to the uh, the number of uh, horses under the hood, or maybe it's the you know, number of cubic centimeters. The cylinders or the, yeah. you know, it's like, what, what's a Oldsmobile 442? It's like four doors, <laughs> four tires. <laughs> Too bad. I don't know. Like, what, what is the point of this? I don't know. Who wrote this best article? You want Houston. the best mobile platform for Microsoft apps? Try iOS. Oh, it's under therot.com. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a long running uh, advocate of Apple's platforms. I thought I would just remind <laughs> you. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I, I just kind of look, if you just look at the world as it is today, and, and Microsoft's moving to this, you know, I will say devices and services, uh, you know, this mobile first, cloud first kind of thing. Um, where the most apps are from them is on iOS. Yep. And it's not just the most apps, it's the best apps. Like the, the quality of them is better. Even when there were versions on Android, the Android versions are often in preview, whereas the ones on iOS are more full featured and they're just kind of out there and they work right. And there are unique apps. There are certain apps that are only on iOS, like Sway, you know, for example. And it's only iPhone. I like Sway though. Only on the iPhone. So, I mean, I don't even use the iPhone full time, obviously. But I looked at the Microsoft apps I have on my iPhone, and there's a lot of them. Yeah. And there's a lot more yeah. of them in the store that I don't have. I mean, it's very interesting to me. Is this but hedging their change. bets, or is it what Satya Nadella said, we just want to be everywhere our users are? I think it's both. Just in case this Windows yeah. thing gets all I think it's both. Doesn't go. Some of it's catch-up. You know, a lot of mobile first, cloud first is we get to get out there and get on these platforms. And Android came a little more slowly. I think because Apple or Microsoft had years of experience on Apple's platforms previously, they had a lot of people that knew the language that you would program in, the programming environment. I think they were able to get it <laughs> a little more quickly, and I think the Android stuff. And I'm, I'm conjecturing. I, I, I don't really know. Love the textures. It, it took them a little longer to get ramped up. All on around. Android. Is... And I, Android has challenges too. There's so many different devices, device types, you know, screens. And, you know, it's a mess. It's like Windows. 
So you, it's a it's a different thing. I think on Apple and the Apple side, it's a little easier, you know, to come up with an app that's going to work right because you don't target as many different types of devices. To. By the way, but it's yeah. an interesting thing. You know, oh. uh, the Apple one is the best one. You know, if you're a Microsoft guy. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a little frustrating. Or a gal. Somebody said I was sexist today for referring to Microsoft guys. Yeah, or gal. Greg Milton says it's 400 cubic inches. Four. <laughs> this is four, four, two. Yeah, no, four of course it's like four on the floor. And yeah, four on the floor. Uh, yeah, two, course, two carbs. Days. Oh, two carbs. Two carburetors. Well, two carburetors. But now Eric Duckman says I don't no, think it's two exhausts. Four, 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 four twos. Oh, two exhausts, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, we used to joke about that. I had a friend who had a four, four, two, so it was like four, I can't remember the joke anymore. It was like four, <laughs> like two four doors. Tires, four, two. four tires. Four, four doors. Four cylinders, two engines. <laughs> Which is the exact opposite of what that car looks Yeah, I know it was two on the floor was part of it. Yeah. Or four on the floor. Four on the floor. It was, and he, it was literally a four-speed stick shift. God, my car has like 30 speeds. You need it to be able to like bench press 200 pounds to shift the <laughs> stick to it, but it wasn't like a electronically assisted or anything. It was like a stick coming up on yeah. the floor. It was well, metal. It's direct to the metal. Yeah, it, exactly. You were literally changing metal in the engine. <laughs> <laughs> Those were cool. the days when driving yeah, was driving. Yeah, it was nice. Um, so, a couple of things going on with Nokia. Uh, it, they've said they've made noises that they might want to sell off the here maps, the whole mapping division. And then they apparently are putting in a bid for uh, Alcatel Lucent, which I, I, I believe means they will become a networking company. I think, in other words, what they've decided is this is the business. Yeah. Nokia is now yeah. this. Get rid of the nav. Which, by the way, explains the tablet they announced. But, <laughs> you well, know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Try to sell those. But I think, you know, them. maybe this is the direction. Yeah. And also, I think, um, in the patent business, licensing business, because you can yeah. bet with Alcatel. They still have that division. Yeah. yeah, they're going to pick up a lot of patents. Lucent guy has a ton of them. Yeah. yeah. How much did Microsoft pay these guys? Was it $7.2 billion? It was. Wow. So, and how much are they going to acquire uh, Alcatel or Nortel or whatever it is? What's the price there? It was more than seven point two, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was $6.2 billion or something. I can't remember. That. Was it? Yeah, it was a lot. But it's it like getting it's money stock. from your parents to buy a car. No, it's a stock. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. $16.6 .6 billion. Yeah. Yeah, that's more. Seventeen billion. Seventeen wow. billion yeah. dollars. I mean, I can't. I, I would imagine a lot of that is in stock or something. It is it's almost all in stock. I, I can't imagine they have this cash. It is. It's all stock. Yeah. The uh, check from Microsoft is like sitting on the guy's dresser. He still hasn't put it in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really <laughs> interesting um, end for Lucent because Lucent, of course, used to be Bell Labs. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Where Unix was invented. Right. C programming language was invented. So much of the modern Which, world was. By the way, I just point out, Mary Jo said something about patents, and that's the other part of their business. Yeah. Ultimately, this is what happens to those companies, because when your only business is licensing patents and then suing people that aren't licensing your patents, you can make a little run with that. But that's not like this is not like a long term business, you know. I mean, eventually you get bought as new markets come up and people want that technology or whatever. But it was funny, when the word about them maybe selling off here came out, uh, it was like late last week, a Bloomberg report said that Nokia might be selling the here maps division. So many people on Twitter were like, that's stupid, that is never going to happen, that's too valuable, I can't believe anyone's even thinking that. And yeah. Today, they confirmed, yes, we yeah. were thinking yeah. about spinning yeah, off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And one of the potential buyers, by the way, is who's been mentioned is Uber. Oh, Really? Wow. Yeah, yes. that's true. That's how cash rich they are. Yes. Wow. Um, and you know, everyone's wondering, what about Microsoft? Because Microsoft does use here technology in yeah. conjunction with Big yeah. Maps, yeah. and they did buy the other parts of Nokia, even though they did lay off. Well, they half wanted of the here. People. You know, I I've read conflicting things about that now. I read I read that Steve I Ballmer wanted. <clears throat> yeah, Steve Ballmer wanted it. The board said no, and then I've other, read other reports saying, well, Nokia never was going to sell it to them anyway. And they were, wanted to keep it. Here's the thing. Um, I think strategically it makes sense for Microsoft, but the real reason for Microsoft to buy it is so that someone else doesn't get it. Imagine if Apple bought it right. or Yahoo right. bought it. You know, you don't want it falling into the hands of someone who, A, may not be interested in licensing it to you anymore, and B, 
may no longer need you because now they have their own mapping technology. Yeah. Basically, my strategy is always go nuclear. I think I don't know if that's obvious yet, but <laughs> I mean, I think that's how they should do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be interesting. And and Nokia did say today they are investigating the idea of selling here, but they didn't say we are trying to sell here. Um, right. So it's still not confirmed, but. It kind of makes It'll sense with this other thing. Like, like it's a complete realignment of the company. Right. It does. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and um, I think it was Bloomberg who pointed out that here Maps right now is valued at $2 billion, uh, but when Nokia bought Navtech, it, they bought them for $8 billion. Wow. So at this point, it's they're just trying to recover something. $650 million today. <laughs> yeah, but well, that's the thing. Remember that this, is ch- this landscape's changed a lot, Navtech. It has. There were yeah. two companies, Navtech and was it Tel, Telenav, that really had all the mapping. Sure. And so that was a big thing. You were buying half yeah. the GPS market when you bought, bought one of them, and it was a big deal that Nokia bought that. But the but and this is just shows you how fast this stuff moves. That wasn't that long ago. Right. Uh, but standalone GPS is the whole world map of mapping has been completely <laughs> changed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Apple to a lesser degree. So now you've got to figure. I think Apple could. Really uh, benefit from here. They need some, you know, more yeah. data. Yep. And you know, Microsoft's always trying to spend offshore cash, so. Well, both both companies, right? Don't want to repatriate yep. cash. Right. Uber's so an interesting sense. play. I know yep. that is. And, and the other rumored buyer is a conglomerate of German car companies. <laughs> well, that would make According sense. That would save yep. probably save the money, right? Because they could. Right. Yeah. Uber buying things. here maps is like. Uh, Gateway buying Amiga, you know. Yeah, it's a bad idea. It's, a it's bad like idea. I sort of understand, and we can just kiss that goodbye. I, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it would be a bad thing. That, for that would just consumers. be a smart thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I would hope that Nokia would want to sell to somebody that's going to do something good with the division. I like to hear Microsoft is uh, familiar with writing big checks with their name on it. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> I want to give them a shot. I would. Yeah, guess. I like. I like the Hear Map stuff too. Oh, love it. it. And you can download those maps. Uh, I've downloaded all of Europe and North America yep. on my little phone here. I mean, it's kind of amazing, really. Yeah, it is. And so now I can use it offline. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling. Yeah, it's neat. We used it in Vietnam. I, everywhere we went, we, yep. we downloaded the maps, and they were really we accurate. We in Europe, and we do this exact, exactly. You, you, you download the maps, and you're offline, and it works great. Yep. <laughs> yeah, when we were at NAM, we used it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we used it, yeah, sure. <laughs> but you know what was interesting? In Cambodia, they didn't have maps. At uh, all? Offline, offline maps they didn't have. Um, Here so did. Yeah. It's not everywhere. Well, right? that's Here's interesting. Not every- Here is not everywhere. Mm. It's, it's not <laughs> there. Let me, let me, hold on. I need to think about that one. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, boy, I think both. it's a great value to both Microsoft and Apple. But Microsoft, given that there's a question mark about its mobile going forward... What really, do you mean, Leo? I've never heard that. <laughs> I'd be reluctant to. <laughs> I think it's more valuable to Apple than anybody. What are you saying? I think, I think although, that Apple will outbid everybody. Is what although I'm Microsoft, you can make the case now that they're cross-platform, they could <laughs> say, hey, we're going to put here maps on every platform, part of our cross-platform strategy. Why do they want to do that, though? We want to get here maps just so we can put it back on iOS. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft. Then, if you believe the freemium strategy, right, there'll be free maps, but then there's going to be something that is... Oh, geez, here we go. If you want offline maps, you have to subscribe to here 365. Oh, God. I can see that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be. Yep. I, I predict. Think I should have that, those uh, words. Somewhere a light went off in Redmond with someone who's like, you know. Spending so <laughs> much minute, time yeah, on a right. single tree. And maybe I will only show this yeah, in a glimpse oh, in no, the film. runs the mobile business. Yeah, get me Elon, quick. Uh, I think, okay, I predict a massive bidding war is going on right now between at least Microsoft and Apple, maybe some other companies. I, I think j- but the effect of putting up feelers like Nokia oh, did yeah, that's why they're doing is going to generate the excitement yeah. that will be even greater than they expected. And well, who knows? They may decide, look at all the excitement. It's really worth something. Let's hold on to it, no, which would be a no, huge no, no. mistake. Now is why it's now is the time, guys. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so well, it's hot. I think so. Yeah, I think this is that they raise that trial balloon, expecting 
a little bit of a, you know, it's like dipping a can of tuna fish into a piranha basin. They're, <laughs> <laughs> yep. they're just waiting. They're waiting to be smart. I think, yeah. <coughs> Uh, although if Apple gets here, somebody's pointing out, they'll probably kill it on iOS, on uh, Android and Windows Phone and make it yes. iOS only, right? Oh, yes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's why Microsoft's got it. Big. We'll all be using iPhones per my article. So <laughs> yeah. oh, I dread a future. What a world. What a world. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. I, dread I, I really think Microsoft should do everything they can to get this. I think they have. I think they have to. I mean, I think the sky's the limit. I, I, I looked this up at the time, but I, I think the license for here mapping technology, location stuff, was four years, yeah. possibly five. Yeah. And I assume that whoever purchases it would have to uh, live up to that agreement. But we're about a year in now. I mean, is the thought that Bing Maps is going to? Off and be its own thing and be good enough for that. I, I mean, that stuff is tough navigation with right. live updates and traffic. Uh, Apple learned that lesson. Yeah. yeah. You can't just, you know, whip it up. You can't just, you can't just call it map.app and think it's going to work. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult. That's really interesting. I hadn't really, uh, you know, kind of thought it out in my mind, but that's a really interesting. And Google, uh, Google wants, is sitting pretty. They're the ones with all the data, the years of uh, research. Well, this is where the insane Google thing makes sense. You know, they, they're they the biggest data collecting entity on earth. I mean, them doing maps does make sense. I wish Google Maps was on Windows, you know, Windows Phone. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. my wife's, you know, we're out in the world, we're doing stuff around here with maps. My wife's phone is always up to date. It's, al it's always adjusting mm -hmm. the route because of an accident occurred and you know it's 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 always really up to date um the nokia one's like oh no you'll have no problem getting to the airport in 20 minutes that's how long it takes really because it's 5 p.m are you sure it's gonna take 20 minutes <laughs> you know, and then Campbell, like an hour and 35 you... minutes later you've been watching it kind of recalibrating yeah. the time oh, i guess time. i was wrong I... yeah so yeah yeah it, it maps is a tough one it's not like a it's not like a notepad app. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a, a very a big data. data. It's a big data. Hard computer science issue. And that's why Google's so good at it. It's a big data In Cambodia, did you end up using Google Maps, Mary Jo? Um, what did we do? No, I don't know what we did. Oh, what, one of my friends had an Android phone. So. And he used Google Maps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Like, wait, what did we do? No, you, just, you just don't have offline capabilities, basically. Right. right. Actually, you do, even then. Well, for a route. For a route, you Ahead of time. Yeah. If you remember, you can download a you know an area on Google on Google's uh, maps. But yeah, no, I think nobody knows that. It's well hidden. I think at some point Google is going to have to do offline maps. I can't believe they haven't. And at that point, you're kind of running out of advantages for here. Do you think there's some skittishness though, given how rapidly this has changed? I mean, whatever well, happened to MapQuest? <laughs> No, just in general, I, yeah. I, it, it's so, hard to look four years ahead and say you know where mapping's going to be. Yeah. Okay, but I, I know Google's going to be there. I yeah. mean, I think oh, no, Google is right. the one that's the no question. I, yeah. I here, I you know, I like it, but well, that's what that I'm saying. How much is it worth, yeah. really? Yeah. Right. Well, you want to sell it now. Yeah. yeah. It, by the way, if tomorrow Google announced offline maps for everybody. I mean, the value of here goes down about 50% right there. Uh, I don't know. Here maps, are, they're in cars and all that kind of stuff. But Yeah, that's, uh, that's it's a, it's the other... dwindling. It's still a dwindling. The other group, of course, as you mentioned, German car manufacturers, whatever the car makers, <laughs> might very much want here to get... But now, well, you know what they're doing now, though, and the smart thing for them to do is the in-car stuff with Apple and Android. Yeah. Uh, where you just bring your phone and it goes okay. Well, that's smart for car makers too because they don't have to deal. They don't with have to deal like with it. They don't have to update it. Yeah. Their cycle, their update cycle, is so different. Out of touch with it. It's the like how did we make this work? You implemented Bluetooth. We're done. Yeah, done. Yeah. You know, done. So. Um, hey, you know what's uh, really exciting? The Surface Three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and you I, guys, I, I, uh, excuse this criticism, Leo. Not your best. <laughs> <way>. um, <laughs> so, and, uh, wait a minute. How about this? <laughs> guess, guess what's really exciting? The 
the surface three, and Paul and Mary Jo are soaking in it. Is that better? I, I like that. Mm -hmm. No. All right. I used it um, this week. I, I took it with me as my exclusive machine one day when I was out and about. So I was soaking in it all day. And there were good things. There were bad things. Um, I I think um, I I've been surprised how much I am constrained by the new keyboard. I know really? it's not really that much thinner, but man, I feel so cramped typing on that thing. Yeah. Do you? Yes. I mean, my hand, first of all, I have giant gorilla hands, so yes. Yeah. I, honestly, yeah. the funny thing about the keyboard is it's not that much smaller I know. than other it's keyboards. Not that much it is smaller, smaller but I, I, there's yeah. something about it, because you're kind of on top of it, you feel... Yeah. I wonder if it, and that's why I made, the com I made this comment on Twitter, and I was roundly ridiculed for this, but... It, if you could separate it from the tablet and use it yeah. kind of like a Bluetooth keyboard, I actually think that would alleviate part of the problem. But, you know, obviously you can't. That's right. interesting, though. Yeah, I, I certainly feel that way. Yeah, and, and, you know, I always say before I talk about typing, because we all, what we do for our jobs, we type a lot. And I yep. think a lot of people who may use this device exactly. will type a couple yep. emails, and then they'll, like, be done. But we sit there, and we type, and we type, and we type. The end, my hands were so cramped. I was just like, oh, I want a real yeah. keyboard. You guys are professional well, typers, really. But it is aimed at students. Yeah. And it it's and also aimed at uh, mobile professionals. I mean, I... I but I you don't have any problem with the Surface typing. Pro keyboard. Just, just this new th Surface 3. There's, it, the other keyboard is a spec wider, and it's yeah. not a ton wider, but it just that little difference. I just feel like I can type better on the original type keyboard than I can on this one. Not sure why. Um, yeah, I, I like the weight, though. Very light, very well balanced. The battery held on for the whole day just barely, which was good. Um, and all I was doing was tweet deck. Um, what else was I doing? I didn't have a ton of things running, and, and it still really um, used up my battery quite a bit. Not sure why. But connected standby working better. I'm I'm very happy about that. So when you're not using it, it seems like your battery isn't just being eaten away, like it was at least for me on the Surface RT. That I mean, my battery was done no matter what I did. So that's good. Yeah, I've been doing battery tests and. Uh... One of the things I've been doing is you know, run a couple of videos in a row and then let it sit and gauge the battery life when you left it compared to when you come back. And there's a little there's a little leakage there, and it's not very precise, obviously, to do it that way, but um, it's definitely better than these devices used to be. Well, one thing I don't want to have with anything I carry around is leakage. <laughs> right. No. So, right. I'm not And let's get the latest on loop gate. No. <laughs> I wrote, I I wrote what I considered to be my most important story on the way out. Story of surface pen loop. An ode to the loop. Oh, how I love the loop. Let me count the ways. Should, you want me to read it uh, dramatic? No, you need a dramatic it's reading for you. <laughs> to surface pen loop. Mm, look, there it is in all its pristine beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that loop in uh, French is boucle pour stylet? Or in uh, Spanish is <laughs> porta plumas? <laughs> porta plumas? Bouche pour stylet is really good. Porta plumas? Boucle. 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 Porta plumas? Porta plumas? I love that. Loop is such a prosaic name. Yeah. Let's, go, let's all call them from now on. Hey, did you get the uh, port de plumas? Le, le, le bouche. Le boucle. Boucle. <laughs> le bouche. Um, so. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you why you yep. put the credit card receipt in the uh, article. I'm trying to show you how small Surface Loop is. <laughs> so if you look at if you look at the if you look at the next picture, you'll see that it's smaller than the credit card I used to make the purchase. <laughs> Paul, you've really gone in depth. This yeah, is that's the point. In depth research. I had an unboxing. I, I Did you do it. an unboxing of the Loop? I mean, sorry, well, the no, Loop. This, this is just the the whole. Oh my God. Yep. He, he 
he's got a problem. Oh, a loop problem. My. You don't read that part. You're afraid to go there. Fully extended, that. the Surface Pen Loop Packaging magically extends by 2.5 times its original size. I don't know how Microsoft accomplished this magic, but based on a recent view of Interstellar, I suspect some form of wormhole or singularity is at play, where physics, as I understand it, is expanded into additional dimensions. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Microsoft helpfully provides instructions for the exact placement and orientation of surface pen loop on your type cover, and it does so without using a single written word in any language. This too may be seen as magic. <clears throat> it's incredible. But you know, this loop looks so much better than third-party loops. <laughs> yes. It does have that authenticity thing going for it. Didn't like somebody do a, a mock-up of a, a loop with a Therat logo? I think I saw yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want. The signature edition loop. Oh, yep. forget the mug. I want the Therat logo loop. <laughs> that's what we're talking. I know. I think that's your new giveaway <sighs> at, at events. I'm going to be careful because I'm running my, my battery tests, but I put my... Surface 3. Oh, that's nice. nice. That's pretty. So you can get those as stickers now? Soon. I'm kind of testing stickers. <laughs> You're well, doing I, a beta? I hope you put the yeah. same obsessive attention to detail to that <laughs> as you did into this loop article. Yeah. <laughs> you know I will. <laughs> Wait a minute. is the adhesive. It's protected under a thin plastic cover that when removed could stick surface pen loop to virtually any surface. The key is to stick it to the type cover and not, say, the table. I can do this, I thought, and I removed the plastic cover. Here, uh, I admit, my courage failed. I'm really as this pl this pleased at something I've done. Why? This is awesome! <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm perhaps overly happy with this. I think this is the best article you've ever written, Paul. Ferrari. I think a, I, that was my point. This Look at that action shot. The Delphi Pendle. 3 Super Bible for its... <laughs> I thought you're not the first person to note that. <laughs> Attention to detail. Oh, the fit was snug. <laughs> <laughs> what if the adhesive, not as magical as I was led to believe, separated from the back of the type cover while I was inserting the pen? Perhaps I should have waited, given the adhesive time to do its thing. Perhaps I... It just worked. <laughs> There's nothing too small and too inexpensive not to obsess over. That looks good. Nicely, John Dunn. How many pictures are in this article? One, two, three. <laughs> this is this rivals the Verge's Apple Watch review in its it wow well, production value. I told you that the the greatest thing a reader ever said to me, right? When I was I went to the Windows Seven launch event in the Netherlands in Amsterdam or in the in the Hague. And I was signing copies of Windows 7 Secrets. And the guy, this guy waited in line and he said, let me ask you a question. If Windows 7 is so easy to use, why is your book over a thousand pages long? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it's padded with screenshots. <laughs> they, can, they tend to fill up the space. Hellcat says, and I agree with him, I smell the bullets are here. <laughs> yes, a Pulitzer. A Pulitzer. A Pulitzer. Yeah, a Pulitzer. See, you Bostonians know how to pronounce that correctly. A lot, a lot of people in the in the rest of the country call it a Pulitzer, but we know yeah. better. We know it's better. A, it's a Pulitzer. It sounds, it sounds ignorant when you say it that. sounds so ignorant. <laughs> you say Pulitzer. Pulitzer. I'm listening to that Steve Jobs uh, book, which I know you hate, Paul, but actually I like a lot. No, no, you misunderstand. <laughs> I, 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 I think there's a, the agenda that he set up for himself was not achieved. I mean, I, I think what we've discovered at the end of this book is that Steve Jobs is exactly what we thought he was. Right. Yeah. No. It's no. It's not revelatory in any way. It's, By the way, here's a re well. Here's a revelation, and I, I, I accused Apple of this when it happened. In whatever year, uh, uh, you know, Steve Jobs got on stage at MacWorld after CES yeah. and said, "I, I've, I've invented this thing called the digital hub." And the Mac is going to sit at the end, in the middle of this hub, and all your devices are around it. He showed this big picture, and I said, "Wow, I, 
Microsoft just, just announced that at CES like three weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And and I, I think what I wrote at the time was something along the lines of, A, no one is ever going to remember Microsoft did this first, and B, it's, it's possible, even likely, that they came to the same conclusion at the same time. Okay, fine. And we all know how the future went. I mean, they, Apple got it right, Microsoft didn't. It doesn't really matter. In the book, some guy from Apple saw the CS keynote, went to Jobs and said, you got to change everything. we got to do this. <laughs> yeah. Like, it wasn't, it, it, they literally copied it. Yeah. From Microsoft. Yeah. That was actually That's good to amazing. read that. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, Schlender in the book says uh, that basically Bill Gates gave Steve Jobs his marching orders. Yeah. Here's what you should do. Well, I'll, I'll let history record that little fact, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Next time you want to call and you want to innovate. Yeah, you know, yeah. The say. only thing, I'm listening at, uh, to an audiobook version of it, and the only thing yeah. that's driving me crazy, we were talking about the mis mispronunciations. Yeah, the guy doesn't, he says Silicon Valley. Does he call it OSX. Oh. Oh. And it's driving me nuts. It's like, didn't you, and uh, by the way, no blame to Audible on this. Jobs. Strokes Jobs. For the podium. I know. If he'd, if he'd been pronouncing it Jobs, I would have really had a... But uh, but it's no blame to Audible because the publisher made the audio book. And you would think the publisher would have just asked one of the authors, hey, but the funniest part is he's going, at first there was OS 9, then there was OS X. It's like, uh -oh. in the brain, maybe just turn that on yeah. there for a moment. I think what would come after OS 9? I can't wait for OS Y. <laughs> Why not? No, we have that. It's called Windows RT. <laughs> oh! Ow! <laughs> Burn! Sorry. Um, God, are we from? This is the longest show in the history of I know, sorry. It's, it's, all, it's my fault. I, uh... Uh, Emirates is giving all sur all its pilots Surface 3s. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, so of you know what? It turns out this isn't necessarily a scoop. I heard about this from someone inside the company, but actually, if I'm not mistaken, this was in the day one press release, so. Oh, give us more. Well, it's a good story. <laughs> so, Love it. I heard about this separately, that, you know, but... Although, when you put it in the day one press release, that's pretty much an admission that you paid Emirates to do that by giving them all of these really? so that you well, could okay. put it uh, in the so, press release. So, mm, maybe. Maybe? Um, Microsoft and Emirates... Well, no, because they actually have a history of working together. All Microsoft right. and Emirates uh, date back to Windows 8, the original Windows 8 launch. In fact, um, <laughs> I had an opportunity to go and, and ended up not going, but they, they did a big event out in Dubai and... Uh, it was around Windows 8 and the original Surface. And I think that what this is is actually an upgrade of the existing Surface devices. So it kind of makes sense that they would work with this partner who they had already worked with on a new version of a product. So I, I don't know that it's a, uh, quite as nefarious as maybe as you might think it is. I don't know. but I, 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 I nefarious. Just it's just that when you, when you announce a new product and as part of the announcement announce how it's being adopted by somebody, it's not the same as saying somebody looked at it, chose it, thought about it, compared it to other products, right? I mean, they, well, they, how would they know to choose it if they hadn't even seen well, it? Well, of course, of course they saw it. I mean, I, well, they did, obviously. Nope. I mean, you know, they show partners things early. I don't, right, yeah, all right. No, no, I'm not knocking it. Hey, as we said, all's fair in love and technology. As long as you don't have a monopoly. That's right. Right. <laughs> Are there hyper the issues come off. on the Surface Three? You seem they seem you seem to be worried about that. Any what issues? Hyper V issues. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I think uh, I, I've been writing my review of this thing. I'm, I'm doing battery testing now. I think this is the last big thing I have to get done and, and be clear about. But I think the problem with Surface Pro, the uh, Surface Three, is that a lot of people look at it and they they want it to do too much. You know, and people like you know, does it run Visual Studio? How does it run Photoshop? You know, can you do all this stuff at the same time? Can you run games? Can you do this? You know, and it's like, guys, this is really designed to be a productivity machine. Thin, light, yeah. good battery life. Yeah. Students, yeah. mobile professionals, you know, that kind of thing. So I did test out all these things. Um, the processor, the platform that's underneath this actually does support the hardware virtualization features that are required for Hyper-V. However, they're not enabled. And if you go into the firmware, there is no control to enable them. So, unless Microsoft fixes the firmware and gives you that switch, uh, you can't run Hyper-V, meaning you can't do a lot of the on-device. Mary Jo, why are you laughing so much? <laughs> Sounds like it's intentional, to be frank. No, I think sorry. Mary Jo doesn't like Hyper-V. <laughs> I am the biggest Hyper-V. She loves Hyper-V. That's all she ever talks I do. about. 
I do. No, I just laughed because I saw someone's tweet who said, I want, no need, an audible book of an ode to the surface pen loop oh. by Leo Laporte. Oh, That's why I was we can get some beautiful music behind it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I laughed, actually. <laughs> not because of Hyper V. That's very good. I'm not a laughing man. No, I mean, uh, honestly, my, in my testing of this thing, I mean, desktop application, obviously, compatibility is great. Uh, Hyper V, notwithstanding. Docking station capability means you can use it as a desktop PC. The Surface Pen means you can use it as a, an actual tablet. It works. It's not like a capacitive you know, stylus. It's an actual active pen with 256 uh, degrees of... Kevin Bacon separation, whatever of uh, pressure sensitivity, um, it's it's impressive. I mean, uh, uh, the other issue with Hyper-V, of course, is that you would need uh, Windows 8 push, Pro, which uh, I installed to test this. The tweak. retail versions of this come with um, Windows 8 One Core, which doesn't include Hyper-V. Um, but in fact, if you want to get it that way, if you're a student or a business, you'll be able to buy it from resellers. The resellers hey. get it for it's fifty dollars more. Say one pro if you want to get that. Excuse me one moment. Okay. I have to note a milestone in my battery test. Oh, good. It's ongoing <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, did it die? Yep. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm playing, I'm streaming videos. So I get uh, new movie. You should just get all, in the, all six Star Wars movies, run them over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What music would I use for an ode to the pen? I know. It's like a... <laughs> What's that? Is it the William Tell or is it da 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 know the name. I know the name. I just not, it's not coming to me. I know it's part of the William Tell, but which part of the William Tell is it? Carmina Burana. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little Probably bit different not a good mood choice. we're trying to express <laughs> here. A little bit, uh, a little bit different. Uh, I think it's the beautiful Galatea. Tweaks all over the place. For that kind of thing. I mean, the issue, of course, is that what you want is for those apps to run in a window or full screen or whatever, but be uh, kind of outside of that environment. Like, in other words, you probably have the Android thing running in the background, but they're not inside of it. It's like a big window with all Android apps. Like, you want it, you know, pinned to the taskbar, running. What are you saying? Are we getting there or not? Alt tab to it and all that kind of stuff. So, it's not that part of it's not great. Not right now. Oh, yeah, that blue stacks, that's kind of this. More blue stacks, no, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and why would you want to run Android apps? Well, because the other half of the Surface 3 equation is the tablet half. And right. we're, that's where Windows really lacks. Right. Um, there are many games, especially, but apps uh, that are available on the Android side. It would be amazing to have a handful of those. Um, for example, the Android version of uh, the Kindle software is fantastic. The Windows version is terrible. I'd love yeah. to have the Android version. Yeah. It would probably kill better. Like, it would be. It, it wouldn't. It's not going to work out. Well, you're not alone. You're not alone. 
Table again. So we can give it a. I I believe it's because last. many files that are stored in Dropbox Oops. are office yeah. files. Yeah. Um, That's probably what happened, right? Dropbox went to Microsoft and said, "See all these doc files? <laughs> you really ought to do something about this." Well, yeah. I, by the way, uh, that's something that doesn't cost Microsoft anything. You you that's use Office, you use their storage. That's a kind of a win-win for Microsoft. Yeah, I guess so. It's another cross-platform thing in a way. Right. It's, yeah. it's like you're we'll you're an Office you customer. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure that's the com conversation they had. Yeah. This is I our know. new thing. This is what we do. Yeah. We want to make it easy for the customer. I love that. I mean, I just that that's awesome. Yeah. And in fact, it makes me more inclined to use OneDrive because I don't feel like they're being yeah. so, uh, you know, anti possessive. Possessive, yeah. 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 Uh, and they also said if you're an Office 365 business customer, um, Dropbox for business functionality is going to be integrated that way too. So that's pretty cool. So. Well, I'm glad we did not install that link server we were thinking about for you, Mary. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's going to be the best way to Skype in people like Paul and Mary Jo. Yeah. Guess not. But now maybe they're still using it. They're just brand rebranding it. Skype for business. Yes. Okay. So it's still it's Link. It is Link Backbone still. Okay. Right. All right. Um, but they're calling it Skype for Business, and this week it went generally available. So it's starting to roll out this week to Office three sixty five customers. Um, so you, you're going to get the new client, the new um, Skype for Business client. That's what you're going to see first. Then they're going to be gradually integrating more of the functionality on the back end. So it's going to it's going to take a while for this to roll out. And if you're using the um, Link client on Mac or uh, the iOS or Android version, it's going to be a matter of weeks, I guess, until we yeah. hear how that's going to roll. Well, Skype's the bigger brand name. I, that makes sense. 
Yeah. And that was yeah. the only brand name, Leo. It is. <laughs> yeah. In, in, I knew about Link only because of you guys, but in, in business, yeah. is Link well known? I mean, is it? It's a well known brand. I, actually, I would. I don't think so. I yeah. mean, but Skype is well known regardless. It used to be Office Communicator. Right. They've had a change. Never had oh, right. Yeah. Never had good yeah. branding. Yeah. I would say it's the least well known of the kind of mainstream office servers, you know, or, or the so parts of office. This is really just a rebranding, uh, but it's the same technology, it's like. Yeah. Same backbone. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Some different functionality in the client, but it's they're trying to make it more uh, a case if you're familiar with Skype, it's gonna look more familiar yes. to you if you use this client. So good. This is kind of Microsoft's yeah. kind of not done much with Skype, so it's good to see them. Kurt Del Benny? He's back. Kurt Actually, you might want to look up the pronunciation of that one, too. Benny. Is it Kurt Del Benny? I believe Del that Bain? is correct. Del I Benny. think it's got to be. It's Del Benny. Del Benny, because it's Italian. So. It's not the good. Del Benny. <laughs> Del Benny. Molto Benny. Yeah, so he, he is rejoining Microsoft, uh, which is very interesting. He was a longtime veteran, like 20 plus year veteran at Microsoft. He, his last position there was president of the office division. And then he left to go help fix healthcare.gov. Um, he, oh, he left Microsoft man. to go do that. Uh, then went to Madrona Ventures as a venture capitalist for a brief period. And this week, Microsoft said he's rejoining in a new role, which is head of corporate strategy and planning for the whole company and reporting to Nadella. So this is a pretty big, high-level role for this guy. He was he was pretty well-liked in Microsoft. Yeah, I was going to ask you what your Microsoft. take was on him. Yeah, um, people who worked with him really, I, I think, liked working with him. He had been there a long time. He, he's an engineering guy um, and had a lot of respect from the engineering staff, from people I had talked to. Um, is there so any indication I, that he was, because when he left, there was a, that was when the one Microsoft reorg happened, right? He wasn't kind of left on the doorstop or anything, was he? I mean, no, no, he wasn't. He he um, was still running Office. He was he was in the senior leadership team and all that. So I think it was just more of a case of he wanted to do something bigger and he got tapped for that bigger role, healthcare.gov. So. He's back, though. Good news. A lot of people I, I've heard from are pretty jazzed that he's coming back. And an, another kind of interesting side note for people who like to follow the inner so. stuff at Microsoft. Um, as, at the same time as he's coming back, Mark Penn, you know, who had been uh, the guy who ran the school. Verbal campaign. He um, also had in his title for a while corporate strategist chief corporate strategy officer i believe now he is becoming chief shall we try officer. to paint so he's like a he's like a feature of office so. now <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy like, hey, Mark, can you give us some insights over here <laughs> i'm surprised yeah. he didn't go to work with hillary now that she's running i know again. maybe he's going to no i don't think they had uh, that in uh on a good note, a good no. note. i think she not. she fired him because he wasn't running her primary yeah. campaign very well are you suggesting that Mark Penn is not perfect? <laughs> oh, yes. He's perfect. Politics, you know. <laughs> sure. Um, data Zen. I saw this in the news. I didn't know whether this is a big deal or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, another company, Microsoft bought. They've been on a buying spree so far this year. This is a Toronto-based global business intelligence. More emphasis for Microsoft on business intelligence and data visualization. Uh, so it fits in, in a variety of ways with the whole productivity and platforms and cross-platform missions at the company. And they said we're going to hear I more. I think the I got it all. Incorporate this into their existing product lineup, but probably will fit in with Power BI, which is their business intelligence. More or less. BI is big. BI is big. Yeah. <sighs> Um, and nice Office Mix update. That's Paul. What is Office Mix and why is it nice? And <laughs> Office Mix is awesome. Office details. Mix is a plugin for oh, yeah. uh, for PowerPoint 2013. Right. That allows you to broadcast your uh, 
presentations in, new, in a new form called a mix, which can be interactive. It can be video based uh, and so on. But the, the, the update that just came out provides two features, uh, one of which is, well, both of which are really cool. One of them is actually really hard to implement. But um, the cool one is the ability to have slide notes while you're recording the mix, which is important because obviously you, if you take really good notes, you can basically read along to it and not have to stub it through it and make mistakes start and stop and so forth. Uh, fairly obvious, works really well, looks like a teleprompter, which is kind of cool. Um, the other one, which is equally cool, is uh, closed captioning support, which is especially important for um, for mixes because they're pre-recorded, and so you can add that captioning capability. Um, the problem is it's, it's a really lengthy process, and you can't do it just in the tool. You have to use a third-party tool to actually create the subtitles, then you import them in. They have to be in a very specific uh, XML based format and so forth. So there's a little bit of work to doing captions, which is a little unfortunate. And hopefully that gets easier over time, but still uh, kind of a neat addition. Well, if it's a neat addition, I'm all for it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Back of the book coming up ziprecruiter.com, our sponsor today. ZipRecruiter is going to help you find new employees. It's a, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt if you're the person who has to do the hiring you know the uh, HR department or if you're a small business you're doing it yourself all those phone calls and emails as you know every time you post a listing you go, oh gosh now I have to go through a whole bunch of zip recruiter makes it so much easier first of all you don't have to worry about which is the right job site to post it to zip recruiter posts 50 job sites with one click of the mouse so you're everywhere, which uh, I say, oh great, now I'm really going to get a lot of uh, traffic. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I promise you, you won't mind because of ZipRecruiter's great interface. In fact, not only do they post to 50 plus job boards with a single click of the mouse, they also plus post to Craigslist and Twitter and Facebook, all the social sites. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows, that's what you want to uh, check out. They even, because they know you're going to love ZipRecruiter and their interface, they even offer something called Traffic Boost. It's a premium product that gives you even more candidates, up to three times more candidates. But wait, you say, Leo, I don't want all those emails to my inbox. Don't worry, you won't get them, nor will you get phone calls, because it all filters into ZipRecruiter's incredible interface, which lets you quickly screen applicants, rate them, and hire the right person fast. They have this locked down. This is... This is exactly what you've been looking for. I gotta tell you, you're gonna love it. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. We love it, we use it. In fact, we like it so much, we've arranged for a, a, a deal for you. ZipRecruiter free for the first four days and 30% off your first traffic boost. Wow. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. This is the modern way to post a job and hire the right person fast. So much better. Just try it. Just you know, try it for free once, and I promise you, you'll know what I'm talking about. ZipRecruiter.com/slash/winders. We spell Winders W-I-N-D-O-W-S. In case there's any confusion whatsoever. Paul Thorot, Mary Joe Foley. The back of the book starts with Paul's tip of the week. So, uh, unlike Mary Joe, <laughs> I use uh, Office regularly, particularly Word, but also uh, OneNote. And it's, it's one of those things like I kind of can't live without, but I wonder sometimes whether that's, you know, that habit or tradition and not actual need. I mean, I even so as a professional writer of sorts, I mean, even when writing books, I mean, I, I don't think I use 5%, you know, 10%, I don't know, the features of this thing. And, you know, I, I sort of regularly recommend Office 365, and I talk about these things on a certain level, but a lot of people uh, write into me about this stuff for saying, you know, I can use this, I can do this, this is free, you know, why not, why not try different things? So I started looking around at free Office alternatives, and there are the obvious ones, you know, the open Office type applications you can download to your hard drive. But I, honestly, I think if you were going to move off Office at this point in time, the point should be not to have to install another heavy big thing on your computer. It should be, you know, what's a more elegant way of doing this kind of thing? And uh, interestingly, the two that are the best are the Microsoft one, of course, my Office Online, which is free to anyone, which is actually pretty fantastic, uh, but lacks a couple of uh, basic features that I actually do kind of need. 
and then uh, Google Docs. And um, Google Docs was also, in a very impromptu and unscientific uh, survey on Twitter, was also by far the one that most people were using, which concerned anyone at Microsoft. But um, in using Google Docs this past week, I actually wrote several articles with it. I used it in offline mode. I tried different, I tried it on different computers and everything. It's interesting how it works. And I'm probably never going to write this up because it's kind of a, it's kind of, it's just like past the edge of the type of thing that I think is, is maybe useful for my audience. But it's actually possible to configure Google Docs to use the same fonts and uh, as Office does. And so the documents cre you create look exactly like Office documents, you know, the same heading styles and everything, uh, word spacing or paragraph spacing and, and so forth. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's probably something that no one else cares about but me. But I, it actually made my experience using Google Docs um, disturbingly okay. <laughs> it was kind of strange. But anyway, I wrote an article about this. I'm probably going to follow it up with some more information about this thing, this kind of thing. But you know, you were talking. We were talking earlier about Dropbox integration uh, with Office Online, which is that free web-based Office thing I was just talking about. You know, that kind of capability is very interesting uh, because it allows you to mix and match software in the cloud. You know, not not just software that's on your computer. Um, Google doesn't offer that. There are third-party ways to kind of synchronize Google Drive with, um, you know, Dropbox and probably other uh, online cloud services, but. I find that capability in Office to be very kind of friendly and open, and it's very interesting that that works. And it works, it works very, very well uh, to the tune of you can, if you just think of the, your world in terms of Dropbox, you could go to Dropbox on the web, double click on files, and they open in, in Word or Excel or PowerPoint online. It's, it's actually a very powerful capability. And so I was just, I was just kind of uh, in the article. I'm not going to go into all of it here, but I, I stepped through a bunch of the the free alternatives to paid office. And there's actually a bunch. Of them. Who knew? <laughs> I guess, uh, well, I mean, I pay for office 365. So I, I sort of think of the, I, it to me, like this stuff just comes as part of something I pay for. Um, and then the software pick is, you may recall last week, uh, my, my pick was uh, office remote for windows phone. And I described it as one of the few remaining Microsoft ah. mobile apps that was unique to windows phone. The <laughs> next day, the next day, <laughs> They released it for Android, yeah, yeah, yeah. so now it's available on Android. And it doesn't just do PowerPoint remoting. Uh, it's not just remote control for PowerPoint. It's actually a way to remotely control uh, Office applications. Yeah, I think it has to be Office 2013 on a PC uh, with a with a device. But you could, I don't know. Like, well, I guess I could imagine a few reasons why you might want to remotely control a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. But I think the big one is obviously for presentations. I'm a little surprised there wasn't. An iOS version of the app release. In fact, we talked so, earlier about how that stuff tends to happen on iOS first. This is the rare, mush. perhaps unique instance, aside from lock screen type apps, where a Microsoft Office app has appeared on Android before it appeared on iOS. Oh, like so now cool. I will get some so, anyway, <laughs> colors so we can print it. Or paint it. Print it. Paint <laughs> it. <laughs> so there it is. Let's One day later, Leo. Yeah, One take long day. Still don't have it for iOS, though. There's always that. <laughs> it's, I, I actually keep I check every day. I'm, it has to happen yeah. anytime. It must be working. I can't believe it. Yeah. I think. Let's delve into our enterprise pick of the week. Ooh. Nice. Nice segue. Yeah, see? I'm working on them. <laughs> Getting better. You're back, I'm, baby. I'm back. <laughs> Although this also is very much in the vein of Paul's pick here. It's about Delve, which is kind of like Microsoft's Flipboard for businesses. It's a, it's a, an app and a service that arranges your contact information and other pieces of information yes. pertinent to you in card form. I so will like get Flipbook. some. Uh, but the news this week Pink. is that Microsoft has come out with mobile app versions of Delve for iOS and yeah. Android. And not for Windows Phone yet. <laughs> so, it's another one of those, yeah. Uh, but if you're using iPhone or Android phones, or even Android Wear, if you're even supporting Android Wear with this, you'll be able to now sync up with your Delve uh, backend and get information about files that you're sharing with other people and eventually with more information about your contacts and what's going on in your uh, shared groups and SharePoint and, and information like that. So that's, that's kind of an interesting thing. They're taking that capability cross-platform now uh, and it also related to Delve they 
uh, are rolling out some Office 365 backend improvements to Delve right now for people who already have it. There's new advanced uh, people search capabilities built in, so it's going to be easier to find information about your contacts and to find your contacts. Uh, and also, they're adding blogging support to the platform so that if you're on Delve, you'll be able to write blog posts as part of your uh, profile. Kind of interesting as well. When you say Flipboard, do you mean Flipboard or do you mean Pinterest? I mean, it's kind of a little bit of both. It's kind of a little of both. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Kind of a cross between those two yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and your code name of the week, I love it. Code name of the week is Kratos. Is that the correct pronunciation? I video don't game read fans? Comic books. <laughs> also a video called? game, too, I is guess. It, is it, what is it? Kratos? 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 Kratos. Um. Anyway, the co that is the code name, and um, I guess there's even a, a video of Kratos or Kratos fighting Master Chief somewhere out there. So, um, Kratos, I what think, the um, is well, I know it is the code name for something called Power Apps. Some paint and the but what brush. Power Apps is is a little bit up in the air. I found a couple of job descriptions on their career site talking about Power Apps. And the way it was described makes me think it may be microservices related, so that it may have something to do with the idea of making it simpler for developers, especially non-professional developers, to pull together APIs and applications that uh, may be in container form and kind of hook them together and make new kinds of apps. Um, the job descriptions talk about mobile first, cloud first, you know, the favorite Microsoft buzzwords. And when I asked Microsoft about it, they just clammed up and said, we have nothing to share. Uh, so I think I think maybe we could hear more about this at either Build or Ignite. That's my guess. So keep your ears ears peeled for Kratos. Yeah, I'll keep my eels peeled too. Eels peeled. <laughs> Peer, your eels. peering. <laughs> Next on Windows Weekly. Finally, it's beer time and a little bit of a sessionable beer for spring. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, this beer is from Victory Brewing. It's called Victory Kirsch Goes. And Goes beers are these very light, almost like Berliner Weiss style beers that are kind of salty. Like those, yeah. yeah, and they combined in this beer yes. a cherry, like a sour cherry with the Goes. Some... And when I first saw it, it's very pink. Oh, uh, I, I was thinking I wasn't going to like this too much, but it's really, really refreshing. Moss it's really, black. really nice. Four point eight percent not so bad. And then we need to brush. It's what? Spalt, spalt. Spongebob hops. Well, we no <laughs> Is that a hop? What is that? Is, what is that? Oh, that's the hop. That's the hop. Do the spongebob sp hop. Sp sp Let's all go to the hop. This is like sprockets from SNL. Like, now is the time when we dance. <laughs> nice. Kirsch goes. Well, you know Kirsch because that's strawberry or cherry. But goza is G O S E. Right, I said like those. Those are uh, Where do you find this? Victory beer. You can find it in beer stores. Yep. 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 Ito. Yeah. So can I talk about my contest? Yeah. What about it? Okay. So this is related to beer, and if you're going to ignite Microsoft Show um, in Chicago, the first oh, kind of like day zero there is Sunday. There so is no there room Sunday, in this we're place. A contest. We're gonna have a Dump a little uh, table. Some IT people. It's going to be me. Uh, Try for the Patch and Switch podcast. Hey, Joey Snow and Mike like. Klaus. We're doing a podcast so. together just about beer. And it's for IT people. So we're having a little contest where if you tweet something, only one tweet, the hashtag is beer IT, like beer it. We'll you have to say in one tweet why this. you think so many IT pros love craft beer. And we're going to pick the best 30 or so answers. And whoever wins gets to come to a private beer tasting with us. And we're going to have people from Lagunitas there. Um, and we're going to have a beer sommelier. And we're going to have free so? food and free beer and pairings. And it's going to be really awesome. So if you want to be in this contest, tweet to me. We use the hashtag beerIT. Give me a reason why so many IT pros like craft beer. If you're a winner, I will 
tell you. Significant speculation. Yes, a little of that. Yes, there's many things you could say, yes. actually. <laughs> at Mary Jo Foley, M A R Y J O F O L E Y. Yes. Um, oh. What a good idea for a contest, too. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, it's going to be really great. It's a little private Sunday. Cool. Uh, you have to be free Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. in Chicago. And cool. it's going to be very cool if you like craft beer. That's all I'm going to say. So, is it in your experience the case that IT professionals drink beer? I think you're right. They do drink beer. Yes. Preference to Not other beverages. Ones. I feel like they do, and many of them are home brewers. I'm going to get another brush. This is yeah, cool. guy, as you know, uh, Russ right. Examiny, spends more money on the or musicians, you know, programmers. Mm -hmm. Like, they all tend yeah. to have the same. They like yeah. beer. You know, they're in the right mental, kind of an intellectual mm -hmm. curve or whatever. It's good. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Creative people. Yes. But don't tweet that. That's boring. Come up with a better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're just creative. They're just better than the rest of them. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Great. Right. Well, right. I'll tell you who's better than the rest of them. Paul Therata, Mary Jo Foley, that's who. Love this show. Love you guys. If you uh, wish to watch live, you can. 11 a.m. Pacific, grand 20 a.m. Eastern one. Time every Wednesday. 1800 UTC. And? Or you can get on-demand audio and video after the fact. See, we're both. We're an IPTV station. Put some water and in this. we're a downloadable content station. You'd call it a podcast. I don't like that. That one. sounds like an antitrust abuse. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I wish. I would I love to get prosecuted for antitrust. I you want so to have a line product with another line line product, Mr. LaPorte. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> How dare you? Go to twit.tv slash ww to get your offline product. It's like here maps. You can just download it and yes, you don't have to be online to listen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, the availability of an offline product doesn't harm any of our online competitors. Uh, I don't know uh, To get the right <laughs> color. <laughs> we have to pay this more and more. <laughs> right, there are more podcasts today than there were when we started That's this That's right. There should be no question in your mind. Of course we are the best. You can also find us on uh, all the places that they aggregate those things called podcasts, as well as, uh, you know, a lot of the apps. Stitcher and Slacker and you know Gesundheit. And I don't know what that is. Pot, pocket Casts. Gesundheit. Info. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Thorat Mary is at uh, thorat.com. T h u r o t t dot com. Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And, and this it's show is, as I said, at twit.tv slash www. We thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye bye. On that, get a lot of color. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Get up. close to May Day. Yeah, I'll have a nice new Apple Watch one when you come in. I, oh, I won't get mine until June. Yeah. You order one? You know. <laughs> yeah, I get one right away. I yeah. I love Apple products, Mary Jo. Why do I have to explain this? I, I think <laughs> you, your new blog is coming up. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I guess. Thank you. Getting over to the other side for Twig. You can hear uh, Jeff Jarvis rant. <coughs> but I need a title for this show. I need a title for this show. I think this is good enough. Here is not everywhere. Oh, I like that. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 409. Recorded Wednesday... This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 409. Recorded Wednesday, April 15, 2015. Here is not everywhere. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace that connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa gift card when you get a loan. And by... ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 50 plus job sites, including social Shall networks try? with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. Maybe that Windows Weekly, Paul Therod and Mary Joe Foley are here. 
the European Union's going against Google. Paul couldn't be happier about that. We'll talk about that. And Nokia really changing direction, not only rumored to be getting rid of the Here Maps division, but also rumored to be buying a very big, a very big tech company for more than $16 billion. Windows Weekly is next. After Microsoft, what happens to Nokia? All right, moving out to the other part of the uh, of the place. I'm going to release the Skype. I can't even do that. I can't even do that. There we go. And I'll see you. I'll see you around, kiddos. You have to remember that this is oil based. Yeah, the clay is oil based, but. Uh, the paint is water based, so but it's acrylic, so it will stick to it. But that has to have a couple of times, but we have to do that anyway because of the we cannot get the color in one shot because the tree has multiple colors. So, so this is kind of the ground color, and uh, it doesn't matter if we come put something down on the. The stand here because. I will move this away over here. Water and computers, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Nothing. Get rid of that terrible yellow color.
TV, it takes you to iTunes. I don't know why. It's a mystery to me. It pops up our uh, iTunes, uh, the same as thisweekintech.com. Yeah, just like thisweekintech.com, which could go anywhere. I, yeah. Like I said, I own it, and we could have that go anywhere, and that seemed like a good place to go, but probably could just go to the Twit page. Yeah, it's just like that. Same, It's the same play page. Hello. Oh my God, it's Gina Trapani. How are you? Gina. Ya? <laughs> Hi. How are you? Yeah. Good. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, it's nice to see you. How's everything going? Great. I'm really Great. enjoying the. Um, what is it? Hop Mufaletta Thursdays. What is it? <laughs> Hot hero night. Hot hero night. I'm really enjoying that. <laughs> Although I, mean, I need to, I need to use Instagram more. So I that think was my excuse. You've branched off a little bit from the concept of a hero. <laughs> I have, I have. But that's okay. I have. The, the original conception was like real hot, a hot, hot hero, hot hero, Italian heroes. <sighs> but I, I can't do those like salamis and. I can't anymore either. I, can't, I, I love I, that I, stuff. It kills I me. Mean, the processed meat with the like chunks can't of fat in it, it can't uh. do it. So I'm so kind of limited, you know. So yeah, I've been. <laughs> well, no, I like what you're. I like where you're going with it. It's uh, it's fabulous. <laughs> I actually forgot to post this week's. Yeah. <laughs> I like to eat. Me too. <laughs> and I love the idea of a hot hero night. Yeah, Sunday night. That well, when I was a kid growing up, we that's what we did. Because it you know, sounds you like something you do in Brooklyn. It does. Yeah. <laughs> we need have dinner at two, and then like eight o'clock, you'd be like, all right, what's you know, where's dinner? <laughs> Avocado BLTs on toasted sourdough plus green beans. Yeah, that was pretty California. That is not hot hero night. That was not hot hero night. That was. Uh, Looks I, good I, though. I had bronchitis that week, so I was oh. like, I was like yeah, it's a bacon. So yeah. <laughs> What's baconmethod.com? Oh, it's a it's a website for uh, Dan Benjamin did it actually. It's it's making it's making bacon. Uh, it's a method for making bacon. You put it in a cold pan and you put it in the oven at like 400 for 20 minutes, and uh, it's uh, it's good. It's really good. It makes good bacon. <laughs> Dan Benjamin has a dedicated website. He does. He does. He has shirts. He has like mugs. He has <laughs> <He's> mugs. Got... <laughs> everything. He's so dedicated. He's so yeah, funny because yeah. when I was in Austin, he said you you can't leave without having good barbecue. And uh-huh. He's very serious about these things. Line yes. a pan. Okay, you know, I have been, by the way, I have perfected the uh, cast iron conditioning. I'm the master of this now. I can take any old cast iron pan or device and restore it to pristine, plus completely condition it. And this would be perfect, of course, for the bacon method. Yes, indeed. He's, yeah, I think, a cast iron pan. See, now... The reason that's very different from a glass baking pan is because the iron holds the heat for a lot longer. Right, 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 right. Put the pan into a cold, unheated oven. I use the middle rack. Set the oven to bake at 400. Set the timer for 20 minutes. Now, I 
I do mine much longer, but that has to do, I think, with my oven. Yeah. Yeah, cal he does suggest calibrating it. By the way, you know what the best way to calibrate your oven is? Make um, uh, Pillsbury Doughboy cinnamon rolls. Oh. <laughs> well, it turns out they're very sensitive to temperature and cooking time. So if they cook perfectly in exactly the right time, your oven is perfect. So like literally, you also have to cook a lot of batches to get them just right. That That's terrible. I'll take that hit. Apparently, yeah. Uh, uh, our son Michael is a fan, and so we make them at least twice a week. So I've had lot, ample opportunity to calibrate the oven. Well, we just got a new oven, so I may have I, may I don't go near cinnamon rolls. Don't worry. I don't touch them. Oh, man. They're delicious. <sighs> I could stay away from the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. Those are actually pretty god awful. <laughs> You've heard and Louis C.K.'s like cinnamon, cinnabon. Cinnabon bit, is right? like to die for, and literally, I mean that literally to die yeah, for. It, it, it is, is a good it routine. Is. Wait, listen, you listen to that routine. routine. I haven't heard it. Yeah, oh, it's, I, it's disgusting. I'm having disgusting. this when I arrive. <laughs> I'm not hanging out in the airport waiting hours to go somewhere. No, I just came into the airport. I'm going home, and I <laughs> have to That's what happens. A That's it's, exactly what happens. It's probably not safe for. Rebroadcast. Oh, I mean, right. there's definitely oh. a part of it that's pretty yes. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> but he's but he's right. They, uh, you actually, he, yeah, they're. It's yeah. one of the most dangerous they're things about flying. Delicious and disgusting, yeah. right? Like all, all at once. <laughs> they're huge. They're probably yeah, two thousand calories. Yeah. Oh, probably. easy. It's gotta be. It's so gotta be. so you put the uh, cold unheated oven. You put the the skillet in there. Twenty minutes. Then you take the oven out. Place the bacon on a plate. Yeah, I mean, Where, when do you put the bacon simple. in there? Oh, line the pan with bacon, the very first thing you do. So basically, yeah. you take the bacon from zero to 400. Yep. Now, I um. line my pan <laughs> with a little bit crum crinkled uh, aluminum foil because I don't want to have to do the cleanup. And I like for the bacon to be up out of the grease a little bit. But that's well, I agree. I think you're getting a crisper result. Yeah. I don't understand why this is. Is it different? <laughs> He, he just, he made a big deal out it's of it. It's obsessive. <laughs> it's but a Squarespace site. Oh, you know what? This is probably because it was a Squarespace yeah, ad. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Whole Foods and got the fancy bacon. I've mm. tried this with a bunch of different kinds of bacon, and it's really, really good. So do you get, do you get the Bavarian bacon, the, the Black Forest bacon that's soaked in yes. sugar? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So we yes. do too. We actually go to Whole Foods to get that bacon. <laughs> yes. And I always order three pounds, and the guy says... You know, they got a two-pound uh, pre-pack over there. I said, no, no, I want three I pounds. Three pounds. <laughs> but, you know, they got a two-pound pre-pack right there, ready for you. <laughs> no, but I want... Oh. Three. Three pounds. <laughs> I love your... Because, uh, you know, I, I just love all these luscious pictures of your little baby girl. Aww. Oh. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yep. Love days. <laughs> That's why I follow you on Instagram. I don't care about hot sandwiches. Hot <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's at a walk in a bath time. <laughs> oh, look at that baby girl. She's so big, I can't believe it. Yeah, she's a she's big girl. She's walking right to the bathtub. Yep, she's like, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. How old is Etta now? She's two and a half. Two and a half, that's right. She's yeah, a she's little taller than say. She's yeah. talking and saying things. Oh, yeah, she's talking the whole thing. She's actually really tall, two and a half. She wear, she's oh. wearing like 5T. She's 40 pounds. She's like a big... 5T? <laughs> Uh, wow. Yes, she's a very tall child. Okay. Yes. I thought we had a tall yeah. child. My back is uh, talking to me for sure. Oh. Yeah. oh, Leo! I thought you'd be proud. We got our fancy, our fancy toilet there. Um, <gasps> I saw that. Did you? That's <laughs> one you bought. That is that is ours. We actually so we oh, had no. <laughs> we had our our bathroom renovated, and uh, our contractor was kind of a freebie. You know, he was like, hey, you know, here oh, you go. This is Enjoy. the best thing ever. It's pretty great. I don't want. I never uh, poop anywhere else now. I, so I, I didn't actually come out and say that with my toilet on Instagram. I just asked, you know, what would people think? <laughs> because we had this conversation. Like I saw this think? and I thought, hmm. So now this isn't the one you have. You mm, have the one that's no. like we have, it comes up. It has a remote control oh, external yeah. to the toilet. <laughs> 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 I don't know why, because it's not like you're anywhere else. No, but right. But Gina, you have a two and a half year old. Isn't this just like a button mash uh, waiting to happen? It, it is. It totally is. It's and a, a wet thing. face. Like her, yes. Yes. Yeah. But she'll her, learn. She'll learn. Yeah. I suppose so. She'll like teaching her about the buttons. I really. This uh, is I good for the cool. environment. I gotta tell you, you don't use toilet paper anymore. This is very good for the environment. It's, TMI, it's Leo. 
You don't need a to. Visual, a visual, I just don't want to have. You don't need head. anything. I don't want to have that. Okay. No, no, I don't want that in my head. Uh, I think if you just look at the uh, icons on this toilet, you'll get a pretty good idea of what it does. I, I was in, I think, Korea, and the problem was I couldn't understand it because it was in Korean. Uh, well, I didn't know what I was going to do. It's upside down. Oh, oh okay. It Dang it. The other ah. way. Think of it as for the user's point of view. Right. There we go. I couldn't yeah. read it from where I was at. Yeah. I think the uh, images, the, the Japanese are not shy about... Uh, no, 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 there's no, it's real, yeah, soft rear cleansing. <laughs> 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 and I'm really sorry, everybody. I've been on back on Twig for five minutes. And we, we're, there's yeah, also look, this temperature. Yours, yours has, yours, yours, yours has more you. controls than ours does. I guess ours, the control, they're hidden, though, in menus. We don't have all those buttons. So basically... Oh. It's not the best user interface. It's yeah, not it's kind of it's kind of arcane. Yeah, there's a lot of buttons there. We have, um, yeah, I basically we have two presets, and I just <laughs> use mine. So you. <laughs> I can't speak for anyone else in the house, but I got my preset, and it works. <sighs> what so you got one. That's nice. Do you like it? I I, I like it. I like it. I'll be honest. I mean, I. How long has it been? Oh, it's only been a couple weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. Six yeah. months from now, I'm not kidding you. You won't go to the bathroom anywhere else. It's like, can <laughs> I, I get home in time? Because yeah, I don't right. want... Well, f toilet paper, you no longer... Anyway. <laughs> do you I do mean, you have a squatty I'm... potty, Leo? No. I have a normal Howard, toilet. Howard, Howard Stern swears by I know he's a big fan point. of that, but uh, I'm, that's too... I don't want to get that involved. There's even a portable squatty potty. Yeah, that uh, would be... Howard Stern on a squatty potty. I'll take Leo on his Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sit, I sit upright like a man. <laughs> I am a human being. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to Hot Hero. Th Ooh, Brancaccio meatball. Mm, made with Italian raisins, stuff. pinoli, fennel, and garlic. Oh. Yeah, that's See, a good meatball. That's Hot Hero night. Yeah, absolutely. That, absolutely. but you can't do that. You can't do that every week because you will, you will not be. Good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Provolone. yeah that's a once in a while. <sighs> so good. I'm, I'm not a food photographer, so some of these sandwiches look like just a big mess of. But this one came out pretty good. <laughs> you're good. No, I don't. I think you're doing really well. <laughs> oh, man, look at this. Hey? Oof. Oh yeah, that was oh. a good one. See that? That looks <laughs> probably. Like not as t tasty as it actually was. It was very, very good. Mm, no, that looks tasty. That oh, looks pretty good. That looks damn tasty. <laughs> damn tasty. That's gonna be a remake. That one. I sure. think you need to start the Hot Hero Night website, like a restaurant, <laughs> or even a web a restaurant. Yeah. Well, you, I, I think say, there's Hot Hero restaurants and Hot Hero, Hero Night site. Hot Hero Night site. I, I there are a lot of things I miss about California, but man, you just can't be New York deli. Oh, you can walk into best. any size deli here and the get best. just amazing cold cuts and, and oh, bread. I do miss that. I have to say. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Thanks for mm. looking at my Instagram. Oh, it's the only way we get to see you every week. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is going crazy. So happy! It's a great day. Says Terrell C. Woods. <laughs> Peter Trapani is on. Aww. Bring back Gina full time, says Donald B. McCarthy. Uh, it's not. A, it's not up to us. Think Aww, people blame me it. when anybody leaves to it. It's like, yeah, what did you do it's... wrong, Leo? <laughs> 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 Aww, what did you do this Leo. time, Leo? It wasn't you. It was What'd me. What did you do I this swear. time? How did you piss say, her I'm off? It's a long time. It's been a long time. Your hair is fully grown back. It is. I, mean, I know. A lot happens in a month. Yeah. I you were looking know. sharp in your suit on your way to that uh, that that conf the conference. Yeah. In Vegas. NAB. Yeah. 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 NAB. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa. Right you know, so you're following us on Instagram too, or Facebook? Oh yeah, absolutely. Lisa posts on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. All those images of me. I don't do selfies. I don't like to do selfies. Uh. Da -da 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 Okay, so here's Alex Gumpel's picture of what he wishes he were doing. Oh yeah, we'll go to it in a second. <laughs> I can't believe they even still make these cameras. <laughs> Dick DiPartolo says, did you bring one back for the brick house? He says, I tried to stuff it down my pants when nobody was looking, you know. <laughs> 
Remember when television used to mean this? What do that cost? What do those things cost? Well, you know, the old pet cameras were thirty, forty thousand dollars. They're expensive. They're amazing, huh? And you know, they didn't give you a picture as good as the little fifteen hundred dollar camcorders we use. And 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 for the thirty five camcorders you have, that cost a total of right less than that. Right, forty forty cam forty cameras we bought for less. Forty. Than wow. Cost of one pedestal camera. Ah, the good old days. All right. Uh, let's check ads real quick. Yay, ads! They're back! They're oh, back! Oh, we got plenty of them today. ZipRecruiter 3, off of code TWIG. FreshBooks103, off of code TWIG. And LegalZoom18, off of code TWIG. Something like a that. A whole lot of TWIG. A whole lot of TWIG. Sorry about the slow start, folks. Appreciate your patience. Move through this quickly. All right, good to go. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we talk about the latest from Google. Jeff Jarvis is here from CUNY, the City University of New York, where he's a professor of journalism, blogger at buzzmachine.com, author of so many great books. What would Google do? Public parts. You don't have to hold them all up. Geeks bearing news. Gifts. I always want to say news, but it's gifts. Same thing. At Gutenberg the Geek. Thank you for being here, Jeff. Every Thank week, you know, love that. You know who's back, and we're so happy to see her. Yay! From thinkup.com, it's Gina Trapani. Are Great you, to be here. Did you do all about Android last night, too? I didn't. I didn't. I haven't been on all about Android in a while, but uh, Jason and I are we're scheming. her we, favorite. We set up dates. Yes. We, it, it, that will happen soon. Yes. I, uh, I had this crazy bronchitis walking pneumonia thing happen, and I was just laid up for a couple oh, of weeks there. No. But I you feeling okay now? Yeah, feeling way, way better. But yeah, it was six days in bed. I, I've never Jeez. like been. Yeah, that's like, what winter does to you. Crazy, crazy. Sucks. So I didn't get on all the Android this month, but I'll be back. Well, we're just thrilled to see you, Gina. Yes. Of course, uh, has given up show business for her startup, Think Up. Uh, you can see my Think Up. Uh, I'll, I'll log in as me, but you can see it with, if you just go to LeoLaporte.ThinkUp.com. And you can see what it does for you. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, we've been having a lot of fun. I miss you guys, but uh, we've been we've been heads down building all kinds of sure. few, few things. I'm really excited about. I can't talk does about it yet. Does it scare you that Twitter is pulling the plug on the fire? You don't. You're not a Firehose consumer. No, we're not. We're not. We're a per user. We use the. We're old school. We use the per user REST API, so we weren't affected by that. I get it. So they got the whole point of this was these are companies that <laughs> can you believe? By the way. <laughs> I, knew you were gonna I spent that. a lot of energy crafting, hand crafting tweets, <laughs> <laughs> making the best possible tweets, and then Hi. some some weird API goes off. There's a site called Twitter Counter that's been around for ages. It's how we used to keep track of who was number one on Twitter back when it was me versus Kevin Rose. Uh, and I had set up like two, three weeks ago uh, their email thing so I could email tweets. Never used it. And I think something weird happened because all of a sudden I tweeted, hi, comma. <laughs> and I'm looking, my Twitter stream lights up. I'm going, what? Four minutes ago I tweeted, hi, comma. No, I'm lying in bed. So, of course, I immediately went down the hall to Michael, the kid, and said, Michael, did you? <laughs> were you on my computer? He said, no. I said, oh, okay. Well, I could never figure it out. Finally, I figured it out that it was from Twitter counter. They can't figure it out either, but it doesn't matter. Hi, comma. Was the not only the big tweet of the week, the big tweet of the year? Two hundred fifty replies, four hundred fifty-six right, so percent of the mean. One hundred sixty-four people retweeted. Hi, Kyle. Oh, SMS. Who's <laughs> gonna call it? Incredible. I. No, we're all gonna do it. I shall. Uh, your fans are thirsty for need a key Leo. when I have <laughs> the kids tomorrow. Is that what it is? I'm just gonna tweet uh, non sequitur greetings every few days and. I'll be huge. You know, you know, it's so funny. I've had people say to me, I read your tweets and I don't know what you're talking about most of the time. Maybe that's it. And, and I think I, I think that just happens, you know, when you're passionate about a topic or when you're talking to folks you, you know, feel like, you know, like the Twig audience, you know, you, you know where I'm coming from. I think you can kind of just make assumptions. So I think when you say something like, Did everybody Hi, understand? <laughs> <laughs> people like it. <laughs> well, there's a real insight there. Wow. That's my theory. 
And I love your, I love the insight that you wrote. Whatever Leo Laporte said must have been memorable. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I thought that comma was a bug on Thinkup's part, but no, it was high comma. It was. was it. it was high it was like, comma. It was also really a cliffhanger of a tweet. Like, Maybe what that's next? it. Maybe that's yeah. the key. <laughs> Punctuation is central to the. How many? How many buys did you get? Uh, oh, I got a lot. The first thing I got was from uh, Jeff Niels, who tweeted there. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, he was completed it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like people's brains can't can't abide by those kinds of things just hanging there out in space. It's like unclosed parentheses. But that's when you're really glad you have ThinkUp because you could immediately, you know, this is not stuff that you can easily see. But ThinkUp will surface this <laughs> stuff. Uh, it's also really fun uh, to go back in time. And, uh, and see, you know, your big tweets from a year ago and two years ago. I, lo I love that. That's one of the reasons we uh, subscribe to Time Hop, many of us. Mm -hmm. I use 33 exclamation marks. There are 33 tweets with exclamation marks. I do like the exclamation mark a little too much. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's a love of life. I wish you would do a think up for podcasts. Mm. And you could say, Leo said actually 27 times this week. <laughs> Wouldn't that be useful? Uh, or soul destroy. I don't know. Somebody soul wants destroying. to measure of, of, of every time I said, uh, yeah. and I oh, apologize me. to everyone who's ever listened to Twig because I do that. That's... And it was just like, kill me now. Just oh. let me crawl under my desk and <laughs> never speak again. We all have verbal uh, crutches. Oh, it's not a good verbal crutch. But no, it's not a good one. But actually it's bad. There's a lot of bad verbal crutches out there, and all of us have some. some. I think, yeah, NPR just did a piece on no totally. As a linguistic. No, thing. totally. No, totally. Totally. No, totally. You know what I hate and I do it all the time? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And it's like, but that I just said two contradictory things in one, in one sentence. Yeah, no. Uh, I say that a lot. Google Ventures, this this was makes me happy. No. Thank me for 185,000 more people seeing their tweet. Remember this you in the last exactly minute. Right now. I know, I'm bigger than or you. Not. When or you not. always sit up <laughs> in the watch, night, you, you, watch, you guys watch, uh, Silicon Valley on, uh, forget other people's I other did. people I uh, sleep. I, I love that shit. At Wait this a time. What? Yeah, you dropped. Uh, oh, I've been that's working it. on Jeff, Jeff, Jeff so. like, left it in protest. I love that show. So many, so many I love hate. it too. I know people hate it. It's a satire. It's I think it's funny. I think it's funny. Think Look, it's some great. jokes aren't, but it's if you're. Enough. You know, There's a little too many dick jokes, I understand that, and, and unfortunately Sunday was really full of them. Um, but if you're in the scene, you recognize so many things. And I was just sure, and I was wrong, but I was just sure that there were like tons of venture capitalists, real ones, sprinkled through that episode on Sunday. Definitely. Because they're out, the, the story is that uh, at the end of last season, they won TechCrunch Disrupt, and, uh, and so... Pied Piper, which is this fictional company that's created this new uh, compression algorithm that's better than any... What, what is the stat? We, we got Weissman, five, the we got five on the Weissman scale. <laughs> and nobody's ever done that! And uh, and there's a Google analog called Hooli. Um, but, uh, the, so the story this, this season begins with them going now out to get their uh, A round of financing. And actually, I really... I, you can't spoil a comedy. Can I spoil a comedy? You can spoil it. I, it was, I thought it was a great commentary. So I, I'm gonna, you don't have to spoil it. I'll spoil it. So the bigger <laughs> jerks they were in each meeting, like the bigger jerks and like the most dismissive and condescending that, that they, they could be, the bigger offers they would get. And like this is, I think this is why the show is so great. I mean, that's a commentary kind Absolutely. of on, on what sort of behavior gets rewarded in an industry. And it's so funny because, you know, people say that show is so sexist. There are no women. How do you like the show? It's so sexist. It's a sap. It's a commentary. No, the industry is sexist. It's sexist right. because it's a commentary on the industry. Um, and I will point out that one of the few women in the show is like the only competent. The only nice, person. intelligent person yeah. in the show <laughs> yeah, is my, that my, woman my, right my, there. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, it was great. I, I loved having been through a, a less intense and, and certainly smaller uh, round of fundraising. I I really enjoyed watching those meetings. Uh, it was a good it was a good episode. I, listen, it's a half an hour on a Sunday. Yeah, night. it's fun. I like Veep a little better, but that's okay because Veep you got to watch three times because jokes are so fast. Right. Um, but here's the thing that I thought was and the real, real reason I'm bringing it up. Um, 
yes, they went and they got were able to get insane evalu evaluations. Finally, the last valuation was that they get what was it, fifty million dollars, and be for a valuation of two hundred million dollars. That was the top they got. And then somebody, the smart woman, yeah. said, "You don't want to take that money. Mm -hmm. That's death. You yep. you need to negotiate down." Because if you take too much money, then there's too much pressure to turn it around, and you'll be out of business. You'll lose your company because you can't live up to that. You're not worth that. And I thought that was a. I thought actually that was very astute. Have you experienced that, Jeff? Ever? I mean, is that is that oh, real? Have. Is that a thing? <laughs> well, you know, I I, I I love to tell the story that Nick Denton, when I was on the board of his last company, moreover, he um, he, he raised a lot of money. It was in the early 2000s. And when we hit the, the bust, I said, boy, Nick, the best thing we ever did was raise too much money, so we, you know, we have a safety net. And he said, no, Jarvis, worst thing I ever did. Let the CEO you know, try things we shouldn't have tried. Too much money is bad. The very, yeah, very we, Nick thing to say, hey, Gina? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's extremely, uh, yes. <laughs> that is very Nick thing to say. He's, he's very uh, uh, bearish on, on that kind of thing. No, I was just reading about, um, I think it's Get Satisfaction, uh, Lane Becker's company, they just yeah. got sold, and, and he was one of the founders, and he didn't make a dime. It was a fire sale, his word. Uh, and when asked, you know, I love what Lane. went wrong. Yeah, yeah, I love Lane, too. Um, he, he tweeted, very frankly, about what happened, but he basically said, you know, we uh, there was a point in the lifetime of the company where we had acquisition offers, and then we had this, you know, round of fundraising that we could do, and we took too much money. The company wasn't worth it. So that. it's exact. Yeah. So it's, this was yeah. prescient. Silicon Valley, of course recorded before this but this yep. is prescient this is exactly wow you know who's writing for them i didn't know this dan lyons so maybe for, for silicon valley the tv show oh oh oh, oh really? I didn't realize that. so maybe wow. dan, did nick told dan and dan told them i don't know well it's dan, not just nick it's 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 you know it, it is wisdom yeah i've seen that yeah uh but but that's the kind of reason i kind of like uh, it because it's actually there's some there's some real reality in all of the comedy. Yeah. There, there's a there's an insider knowledge that's going on there, that's pretty accurate. And I think maybe some of that does come from Dan Lyons, who was, you know, was uh, the fake Steve Jobs, as a character and a half, and for five weeks or less, was editor in chief of Valley Wag, and then quit. Um, and apparently, I didn't know this, but because uh, I I'd seen it somewhere else, but then I saw in the credits that he's a contributor. Wow, so Lane sold Get Satisfaction. That's too bad. Lane is, Lane is a really good guy, you're right. I love Lane. He'd raised $50 million. Uh, wait a this minute. Is a good he raised 10, oh, $50 million valuation. He had raised $21 million. Um, Preference will kill you every time. He was pushed out of the company in 2010. Well, it's even worse. Where it's one matter if you kind of do it to yourself, but then you, you you're you're powerless. Yeah, but boy, you know, I hear that from a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who've been pushed out of their companies. It's not at all unusual. No, not at all. In fact, it's almost in the script. Yeah, I I had a prenup with Lisa. Says she can't push me out of the company. <laughs> You're not kidding about that, are you? No, I am kidding, but I mean, oh, okay. uh, I, did, I did ask her. You're not going to push me out of the company now that you're married to me. Uh, <laughs> so he didn't make any money. Now, it was, it was sold in a, a so-called fire sale to Sprinkler. I don't even know who Sprinkler is. There's an irony there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 felt bad. I felt bad about this for him. I, I told him, I'm sorry it happened this way. This, I, this is tough. You know, but like, well, you know, when you're a founder, particularly when you're going out uh, get, trying to get funding, I mean, your job is to sell, you know, is to be as optimistic to the point of absurdity mm -hmm. about the possibilities that are, you know, within your business, right? So I think, you know, it's particularly when you get into a, a bidding war situation, which is basically what they had in, in the show, which is mm -hmm. fictional, of course. But, you know, more money feels like more success. That's more mm -hmm. staff you can hire. That's an office. That's, you know, so you can do so many different things. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing, I, I think, for a founder at that early stage, especially when a company is basically just an idea, to say we're not worth this much. <laughs> you know, in the, in the show, he says, can we, can we do that? Can we ask for less? <laughs> Does anybody do that? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And it was right on. And, and uh, Lane Becker says, ask for less. He says, uh, I, although I thought, it, uh, I, I thought it was more a game of chess, it's more a game of thrones. Venture, <laughs> that's, venture, a great, that's a great line. Venture capital is a game, and we lost. Poor guy. Now, of course, the current CEO, 
uh, got, did fine, and the CFO and late stage investors did fine. But the guy who thought up Get Satisfaction, which is a brilliant idea, yep. got nothing. So a little lesson there, ripped straight from the headlines. And HBO. And HBO. <laughs> we didn't get your opinion. You think Silicon Valley's okay, Jeff? I haven't watched the season yet. Yeah, well, you didn't miss anything. It's the first episode was Sunday, so. Yeah, I know, but I. You know what? I mean, I'm in such a habit now of watching everything on my Nexus Seven. I, I've been flying like crazy. I was in Copenhagen for 24 hours last week, and I'm wow. going to Italy and UK this week, and so I just stock up on things on my um, uh, Nexus Seven, and that's how I watch TV now. Well, I was, I was thinking that on Sunday because Sunday night, if you were a live TV viewer, was was purgatory because you had. Uh, Good Wife, you had a new Good Wife episode, you had a new Mad Men episode, the second in the season, the last, the final season, and you had Game of Thrones, Phoebe, and Silicon Valley, all on the same night, and, and some against each other, and that would not, I don't think that would have happened quite so readily in the pre- VCR on demand. Well, you had, had a little bit of that. Well, you, you did it, but if you right. did it, you did it on purpose. You said, like, we're yeah, going to exactly, take that exactly. guy down. Bingo. Bingo. Yes. Right. But you knew it was and, bad for viewers if they had to, and, and ultimately for you, yeah. if they had to figure out, well, what do we watch? I'm, I'm spending a fortune now buying shows. Yeah. You know, I, yes, I buy content, people. Um, no, and, I'm, I'm and, with you. I, I mean, I'm, I'm like, like, Good Wife, I actually don't want to watch it too fast now. I'm, I'm saying I know, it. I know, because you're coming to the end, right? Oh, I'm not. No, I'm up to season three. Oh, we're on season two. Good, we're with you. It is. It's so good. I just. Oh, it's so but you know good. what? It's a mindless it's show. Great. It's good. You can sit there. You can. You don't have to. Game of Thrones. If you miss thirty seconds, oh, I'm, 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 you go. I'm, Who's that? Was... Who are they? What is going on? Why did he do that? Oh my god! But but, <laughs> uh, Good Wife. You don't. It doesn't. You can miss the whole thing and understand what happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching season one of Justified right now, which is dead. Love that last show. Night. Love that. That's show. great. Yeah. Banshee. I'm watching. Um, Law of Love over Black. Yeah. Oh, Orphan Black is that? That woman is. She's, she's amazing. She's amazing. She, she, for those who don't know this show, she's a clone, and plays many different versions. Nine, of, part, nine parts, I think. And uh, it's really amazing because it's like nine different actors. It's incredible. It's wild. Incredible. But I do. I have to say, we live in a golden age for people who want to consume television. <laughs> yeah, we do. Oh, God. You know, yeah. you know, we cancel HBO. We, we, we don't have HBO. We canceled after Game of Thrones. Basically, what we used to, would do, we, we would subscribe during the Game of Thrones run and then watch Girls and all the other stuff during that time. But So we didn't even subscribe to HBO this time. We just did HBO Now, uh, which was which was nice. It worked really well for us. But I really liked that I could start, you know, the, 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 sh the Game of Thrones, the new episode was available starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we could start it when we wanted and we could, you know, pause it and, you know, we had like a lot of functionality, and it's a free trial. You get it for, you know, it's free yeah. for thirty days right now to get all the HBO shows. Their timing is good. This is a good time to get people hooked on HBO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. But you know, Leo, yeah. I, I, one of my many weaknesses is popcorn. I love to go to the movies just to have, sit down mm -hmm. and have greasy popcorn. Mm -hmm. I have not seen a movie worth even considering in two months. No, in months. fact, I actually don't actively don't go to movies so that I have something to watch at home. But there's so little to see, is my point. It's, there's it's, crap. It's, it's just crap. The TV well, is so much better than the movies. I said that when I was a TV critic, and it was partly true. Now it is really true. Now it's actually true. If we interviewed yeah. a guy on uh, Triangulation. I highly recommend uh, the book. Uh, and his whole premise is The Sopranos changed everything. That with the rise of the, of the writer-slash-showrunner, uh, suddenly people who wanted to make movies shifted the TV because you had so much more scope because instead of a two-hour story you could tell a 60-hour story and you could really develop the characters and uh, and and the power of the writer uh, increased incredibly thanks to David Chase uh, and uh, and and you know it's st probably started with NYPD and shows like that but it now it's writ large I mean now it's there's no there's no question about it, it, it even you know a lot of filmmakers are making uh, making TV now. Have you seen Daredevil on uh, Netflix? That's supposed to be amazing. No, oh, I God, haven't yet. That's the Sissy Series? Basic one? I don't know. It's a, no, it's a comic book. Oh, Have you seen know. it, Jason? I saw the it's first Netflix episode. It's Netflix original. And, and people are raving about yeah, it. Yeah, people are going nuts about it. I saw the first episode, and I couldn't tell if it was just my disconnection with all things comic book, because I was not a comic book yeah, kid. Yeah, me neither, yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. a Marvel comic, from what I right. understand. And uh, 
I don't know. I felt it was a little slow. Supposedly it picks up, but the and some of the acting I thought was kind of. If oh, maybe it's not that great. But no, I mean, but no. But I, I mean, I put out that I, I put out it. that sentiment on Twitter a couple of days ago after I saw it, and everybody came back and said, "Give it time," you know. And usually with these longer form, you know, shows like this, yeah, you you almost have to put your faith in it that five episodes in you're going to be hooked, and usually by the time you get five episodes in, you understand where they're going and kind of the theme. Well, and that's what I think that's what's changed. So yeah, totally. They made a movie of Daredevil, but it's two hours. You don't have the leisure. To waste the first hour, not waste, but to take the first hour mm-hmm. to, to gradually set up characters, set up uh, payoffs and things like that. But when you know you've going to, especially nowadays where they buy a whole season and just say, you got, here's $100 million, make 13 of them, you got at least 13 hours. Uh, that's, yep. a, that's a big difference. And for, for these great writers, uh, they're, they're just loving this. What was the name of the book? It was such a good book. I, you probably know the guy. He was a TV critic. I, I can go back to my Audible list and find it. Um, but uh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention real quickly to you, Jeff. The Whirly Pop Stovetop Popcorns Popper. Oh. This will oh. satisfy your need for high-quality movie theater popcorn at home. Oh. And it kind of looks fun to have in your... Yeah, it does. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get yelled at, though. Why? Because it smells well, like popcorn in the house? No, I shouldn't be eating it. Popcorn's good for you, isn't it? That's oh, a whole it's grain. Oil. It's oily as hell. <laughs> yeah, the fat content is to is to no. Fat's good for you. Haven't you been keeping up? Everybody knows that. Well, I, I I got enough of it, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. God knows. So getting so so the movie popcorn is actually about getting out of the house and hiding out and yeah. eating something maybe. I love right? popcorn. I'm eating with something you. salty and oily and salty bad and for buttery you. and yeah. Too much of it. And I'm happy. I hate people in movie theaters, but I like the popcorn. I'm gonna look at my. Uh, <laughs> It was. They uh, talk. They yeah. Make noises. No, I like they, big they screens. I still go to movies, uh, but but I notice now I'm much more likely to say, "Let's save that one for home." Yeah. That kind of thing. Uh, we just finished Unbreakable Kimmy, Sh- Kimmy Schmidt. That grew that grew on me. It took a few episodes. That's a weird show. I'm not sure it's how I feel. Very weird show. Yeah. It's I'm, very I'm weird. I'm trying. For those it's, who wanted another Thirty Rock, it's not that. It's very Tina Fey. Like if you, it took me a few episodes, but that, but what, what, what drew me in was the uh, was the song, the theme song. I love the funny. open. I mean, the open is amazing, and right, the premise is kind it. of amazing. <laughs> because it's a play on yeah. memes. It's a play yes. on. Uh, in fact, much of the show is a play on uh, on memes, uh, and and you know the modern uh, world. The, the plot is that Kimmy Schmidt was um, in. Uh, <laughs> The, the, what was the name of the reverend who put her down there? Oh. Re- reverend Gary Paul Gary or something like that uh, uh, took uh, four Indiana women and uh, told them the world had ended. Right. And uh, we got to stay down here in the bunker. And uh, she was there uh, for a long time. And, and it's Don Draper. I mean, it's, you know, John Hamm plays the reverend i haven't i didn't see oh see yeah. that's a spoiler because i haven't got to that part oh, yet no, sorry, sorry. the I, reverend I, shows up yes <laughs> yes and they call him uh, they call them the indiana mole women mole women yes <laughs> so kimmy schmidt comes to new york to try to create a new life where she's not, somewhere where she's not known as a mole woman let me see is this the uh, open because richard wayne gary wayne yeah richard wayne gary wayne yeah this yeah, is the open perfect. no audio Unmute on. All right, let me unmute this so you can see it. So <laughs> what they've done, you remember, you know, uh, what was the first one where some tragedy oh. happened and they were interviewing a bystander and she and it was he was crazy. Yeah, like hide your wives, hide, hide your kids. Hide your kids, like hide that. your wives, right. And <laughs> yeah, they made yeah. a song out of it. So right. this, this, this open to the show is that. This is it. The Messiah, Reverend Richard Wayne Gary Wayne, best known to Yelp users in this area. As Dernsville's worst wedding DJ, I am now joined by a neighbor who wants all the drama. Okay, the so they got like four things in there already. Yeah, right. yeah. Known by, and, and Yelp to. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. What had happened was I was outside talking about time with my grandson when I didn't know where 400 police people came walking. I think this is the best T 
TV show theme ever. Yeah. This is the full version. I've met, they don't usually show this whole thing. They're using Songify. This is actually all you really need to watch. Um, but then I had to create an account, 
which I was like, why am I creating an HBO Now account when the App Store has my information? I know that the App Store sandbox is that. It still felt like a weird experience. And I also just wish that it had been on my, you know, I wish that I didn't have to go through my iPad, which I barely touch and is kind of slow. Um, but, you know, there's still that iOS first thing happening. So it was a good experience, except I didn't like the opt-out. You could go in and then and then edit your subscription and say, don't auto-renew this, but, but you had to opt out of that. Uh, but for, for the yeah. most part, it was pretty great. They learned that from porn. Yeah. That's exciting. They learned that from porn. <laughs> <laughs> what haven't we learned from porn after all? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> By the auto way, Jeff. Renew, auto-renew was something that... <sighs> Sorry. We need to auto renew your lighting system. Oh, tell me about it. They don't have auto renew for Jeff's here. lights. Oh, Either that or they just think I'm you're alive. dead. I'm alive! I tell you I'm alive! <laughs> um, yeah, well, auto renew is the bane of my existence in many cases. But uh, By the way, Jeff, the name of that uh, uh, book was Difficult Men. Brett Martin, did you know him? No. He's a TV reporter for, uh, I think he was a, he's a New York magazine, a bunch of other places. But the premise of this is there was a creative revolution in uh, television that started with The Sopranos, The Wire, and up to up to more recently. And he talks. I, I think the point is right, but, but you can actually also go back in my era. It was Hill Street Blues and Cosmo. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. There, there I think been, that's where it begins. Moments. In fact, he talks about Hill Street Blues in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, and, a, and it's, it's not popular to say anything about Cosby these days, but I think he had a big impact on TV in its time. Yeah. David Chase, David Simon, David Milch, Alan Ball. Um, he talks about uh, Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan. It's, a re it's really good. Difficult Men is the name of the book. I highly recommend it. Let's take a break. There is, and I know Jeff will have something to say about this. I'm going to take my blood pressure pills. <laughs> take your <laughs> pills, Jeff. There's something going on in Europe, and Jeff is not going to be happy about it. But first, a word from ZipRecruiter.com. If you're uh, in the um, unenviable position of having to hire for your company, whether you're the HR person or maybe it's a tiny company and it's just you and you need to hire an assistant. In fact, this is, this is a lifesaver. You've got to know about ZipRecruiter.com. It lets you post to, I, this is new, we say 50-plus job boards. I just went to the site. It now says 100-plus job boards with one submission couldn't be easier. You also get social networks like Facebook and Twitter. I know though, some of you are saying, well, I don't want to post 200 job boards. I'm going to get so many applicants. Well, you want that many applicants. The reason you don't want them is because you get all those emails and phone calls, but ZipRecruiter eliminates that. They provide you with an interface. All the calls, all the emails go to their interface, making it very easy for you to screen candidates, pick the right candidate, very straightforward. In fact, so much so, we've arranged a four-day trial. That that will be enough to hire your first person, probably. ZipRecruiter.com slash twig. Post to all the top job sites, all the social networks, single click of the mouse, find candidates in any industry nationwide. They make it easy to screen the candidates. You do it all within the ZipRecruiter interface, and they have ZipRecruiter's premium traffic boost, which will give you as many as three times more candidates. And you don't care, you don't mind, because you've got a great way to handle them. The more candidates means the more likely you're going to find the right person. So as long as there's a way to handle it, and ZipRecruiter gives this to you. We love this, by the way. We love it. ZipRecruiter.com slash twig. Get 30% off your first traffic boost and a free trial. ZipRecruiter.com slash twig. We thank, not only thank them for their support, but thank them for making a really great service. It solves a very big problem for Hiring. All righty. So, uh, of course, it's so really interesting. I love, I love uh, hosting shows on Twit because every host has a different take. Paul Thorat was thrilled ah, that the European ah. Union was finally, finally going after Google. And you and I have had this discussion a couple of weeks ago because uh, of the FTC uh, documents that were leaked out to the Wall Street Journal by accident. Apparently, the EU is reading the Wall Street Journal, and it has now uh, announced an investigation of uh, Google on two different fronts. One, uh, in the shopping realm, favoring their sites over competing sites and search results. And two, the deals they make uh, with Android phones, AOSP versus uh, true Google experience. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's kind of what I was saying, though, J. 
Jeff, that, you know, they need to be um, above suspicion, right? Uh, okay, so you're aligning yourself with the EU. Good, Leo. Good. Good. That's, that's the place no, I want to be. I'm just trying to get you really ripped. I know you are. I know you are. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was getting myself ready. Leo is going to do the devil's advocate thing here today. Uh, all right, a couple things. Number one, I'm, I'm shocked at how little they have on them, right? So, so, so BFD, Google uh, points to its own shopping advertisers, <gasps> right? And we've had this discussion you know, last week, and we've had it before, that of, of course a media property promotes its advertisers, no big deal there, but that's all they came up with in the actual uh, formal complaint is that, and that's the possibility of a $6 billion fine, $6 billion, because it points to shopping advertisers. You know, I got calls today from BBC and ORF and, and um, Austria and, and, and uh, others, and so they said, what's Google going to do? And I said, well, you know, at one level, if Google just kills comparison shopping in Europe, it'll be a blip on the PNL. They don't make that much money from that. It's nothing. So kill it. You know, screw it. Okay, Europe. And, and, and what, did that, what good did that do consumers in Europe? Nada. There's no consumer, there's absolutely no consumer damage that can be found here. And in the follow-up on the FTC story, by the way, you know, that's... That is uh, Google's res response exactly on the official blog. The, they, they title it the search for harm, and they point yeah, out and, that and these these companies are doing great. Sure. Well, the FTC, uh, you know, and let's, uh, the follow up to that story was that it, it was not a political thing. It was both parties it was a unanimous vote against going after Google because they found no consumer harm. So that's I mean, this entire a six billion dollar fine because they promote their shopping advertisements. Now again. The European, this is all European publishers, because they had agreements with, with the EU a couple of times, and, and the political pressure stayed on for publishers to keep going after Google, and also from Microsoft. You know, you have no shame. You have no, is it, is it pure schadenfreude, Microsoft? Really? Really? You went through this, you paid more than $3 billion, and just for the sheer joy of seeing someone else screwed the way you're screwed, you join in on this? Um, so... Um, you know, that's that's the one is the shopping thing and that's it it's kind of ridiculous the other pieces they've announced they're going to investigate android but there too i just find this amazing you know apple doesn't give away its os it doesn't do anything yeah that was my google response to paul it's as if you're penalizing google for offering a free version of android yeah maybe it's it's limited but they're give, but I, apple doesn't do that exactly and, right and you're and you're perfectly free to put business conditions on that and any company can say to have with you I'm going to use Symbian. You know, it's it's free. And is it is it undue market power? Well, no, because Apple is is still gets the the lion's share of the attention. Um, it's it's a this is a purely political act. It's not a consumer protection act. It's not an antitrust act. It is an anti-American act. Wow. I don't know. I don't know exactly where I stand on this. I mean, I've heard both arguments, Paul's very strongly in the other camp. Um, I think I, I tend more into your side, uh, Jeff. I think mostly because it's hard to show how Google has harmed anybody. Now, the the Android investigation is as much to see if Google has reduced competition in handsets in, uh, in mobile phones, and uh, but that's but. If they've done it, they've done it by being successful. By being a successful and be free. I mean, could you accuse them of dumping an OS in an open source no, world? That I kind don't. of logic doesn't work anymore. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Uh, is and the issue with Google's requirements over, you know, the fact that Android handsets with the Google logo or that run Google's proprietary software like have to meet particular requirements? If you want is the that play, the issue? If you want the Play Store, which of course you yeah. do, you have to take everything else along with it. Search, and that's email, a, that's calendar, a, yeah. Chrome. And that's a quality yeah. control. That, that's, that's a perfectly legitimate business business demand, A. You know, we're giving you the free website. The condition is you take the stuff that's going to benefit us. Don't, don't want it, don't do it. No problem. B, you can go off and use one on your own. You just won't get the Play Store and our stuff. Is and and, right and by the way, many have. Amazon has done that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so and, and, and Microsoft has done that. Frankly, there's a there's a Microsoft yeah. X phone that is based on uh, AOSP, the Googleless version of Android. Um, and I, 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 I that's that's what baffles me a little bit is that 
look, Apple is totally proprietary. It doesn't give away a free version. They're okay, but Google giving away a free version somehow has, has made that worse, made that bad? I don't think that's the message you want to send to people. Well, and, and once again, I'm going to argue this is what I call Euro Technopanic. Yeah. And, and Europe should beware the message that it has sent to the world. I it's, agree a little bit more on the... F- danger, danger. I agree a little bit more on, it, on the uh, uh, the first part. This, the sh- the, I do worry, and we've talked about this, and I, I'm not going to belabor it, but I do worry Google has... Is, and, and Google, by the way, is more of a monopoly in the EU than it is here in the States. But, but again, but there's nothing illegal about being a monopoly. What's illegal is using monopoly power... Unfair. And I think so if you ask here, somebody at, at, and they would and say, do you think Google favors its own sites over competitors' sites in its search results? Most people would say, well, of course they do. That's just good business. In fact, they do it a lot less, as we said on the show a few weeks ago. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the origin of, of, of search-based advertising was to buy position. Right. And I did, in fact, do that search that you recommended of videos on Bing versus videos on Google. And Google doesn't even show up if you search for videos on Bing. It's all Microsoft yeah. stuff. So everybody does that. Uh, I would I would argue that Google should be held to a higher standard. We've had that argument. I, I wish Google well, I was didn't thinking have about the these argument, Leo. related businesses. And part of your argument is you, know, you argue to split up Google. You know, that it should be safer. They shouldn't do certain things. But but as I was, as I was preparing for your counterintuitive <laughs> argument, oh crap! Are you today. prepared for this? Oh shoot! Um, <laughs> I'm in you trouble. Know, <laughs> well, that's it. We're screwed. Uh, yeah, and this okay. goes this goes to the European privacy issues too, right? So if you split up and by, by by one means or other, by not allowing data to go across, or by splitting up the company, or whatever. If you split up Google in some form or another, search will simply not be as good if it doesn't have Android. Android will simply not be as good if it doesn't have search data. Yes, uh, and, right. and on and on and on. You know, whatever you use from Google, the more you use it, the better it's going and to be I for agree you. With you. And big, that's a new business reality. The big data aspect of it is very valuable uh, to me. I use Google now, and the more it knows about what I do, the better. Uh, wish that were true for me, but that's another. <laughs> you don't actually get the benefit of it. But I, I it, let me. But speaking purely from my own perspective, um, and this is going to really come up because Google is changing the partnership agreements on YouTube which uh, may chase us from YouTube. Oh. Uh, and if that, that, but so let's say they do, because right now we are, we, all our shows are available on YouTube. But if you searched for our, this week in Google, on Google, and Google favored the YouTube version versus some other version, um, because it's YouTube and because they make money on it, that would, that could be a real detriment to my business. What proportion uh, of your well, is YouTube, by the it's way. not. It's not much. It's not a big deal. But um, it, 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 let's put it this way: the way Google wants to do it is, we'll take care of all the advertising. You don't have to think about that. They don't like it that we sell our own advertising. That's why we're going to be banned from Google eventually, or YouTube eventually. Um, but they take forty-five percent. Yeah. So I'm not interested, particularly in Google's. Participation well, in my advertising. I don't. So here, here's the secret: where there is something worth watching from an antitrust perspective is not about consumer services at all. It's about uh, Google's power in advertising. That's where Google is a monopoly, and and we've had this discussion also. But, on but the, show. the search results are all I care about, and Google can put me out of business by making its search results favor Google properties, or at least. For, to stay in business, forcing me to sell, to use Google's ad sales instead of my own, and I feel like that's using its its near monopoly in search to enter a new market. They're in the YouTube business all of a sudden, but you're right; it is advertising is the business, and that's not a new market for them. And they use in their market power sometimes. You know, the other funny thing about it is, is Google Fiber right has pushed <coughs> competitors to offer better service. And now the Google MVNO, the more we're starting to learn about it through leaks and such, the phone service uh, is going to push the phone industry. Um, you know, it's a weird thing. I don't know what the analog is for, for your example of before there's a YouTube. There's no open platform you could have been on for your, the sake of We don't use YouTube. Vision. We don't need YouTube. No. Yeah. Uh, but if YouTube, by, by if Google, by changing its search results, forces us to use Google, 
use YouTube, uh, it will cost us a significant amount oh, of I revenue. See. Now again, okay, now again, okay. We don't want, I don't, but I'm willing to put stuff on, on so here's the uh, email I got. Updated YouTube partner terms. Your fans want choices. Hmm, that's a bad start. Uh-oh. <laughs> Not only do they want to watch what they want, whenever they want it, anywhere on any device they choose, which, by the way, is a direct ripoff from a speech I gave 10 years ago. They want YouTube features built specifically with their needs in mind. Over the past several months, we've taken bold new steps to bring these experiences to life. Blah, blah, blah. By, to build on this momentum, taking another big step in favor of choice, offering fans an ad-free version of YouTube for a monthly fee. By creating a new paid offering, we'll generate new sources of revenue that will supplement your fast-growing advertising revenue. By the way, from their point of view, that fast-growing advertising revenue is is from them and them alone. Launching a new paid offering will require us to update your terms through your Creative Studio dashboard a process that should feel familiar. If you look at it closely, what they say is if you... It's the same thing that they offered uh, that musician we were talking about. Uh, if you do not want to participate in this, no problem. We'll make all your videos private. Oh. What? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I say, have at them, the European Union. <laughs> and if you want anybody to testify, I'll be glad to. Well, this goes back to our discussions, Gina, about, about Twitter and developers over the years, too. When you become... And, and what they you know, did by cutting off the fire hose people. Um, when you become dependent on a platform, we've had right. this discussion before, but but there needs to be some major discussion about what about definitions of what's ethical behavior. And in fact, this doesn't really uh, bother me because they aren't important. Uh, I, I never did build on the YouTube platform. I've always been against building on somebody else's platform, always. So we now yeah. aren't, aren't so at risk because of that, but I think there are a lot of people who might be. I mean, it seems like, to me, Leo, it seems like YouTube, the best use of YouTube for you, and of course this would require a lot more sort of editing and that kind of thing, but like, me, me, 30 seconds, 30 to 60 yeah, second mashups of, sam yeah, ads, ads for Twitch shows, <laughs> you know, that yeah. people want to share, you know, best highlights. That's, and we do that, that's, if, in the worst case scenario, if this all happens, I don't know if it will, but if this all happens and uh, they kick us off YouTube because we have our own ads, no problem, because that's exactly what we do, is add free versions of, short versions of our show. So well, we call them Twitfist, Facebook we do too. it right now, youtube.com slash twit, yes. we do it right now. You need to do it for Facebook, yeah. too, because that's because shorter things. Right. And Gina, it's kind of brilliant, because they, they don't want you to have your own ads, so you just become an ad instead. Right. I like that, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, no, look, it's always, always a risk when you become dependent on yes. a platform. Listen, we, we just went through this with ThinkUp. We, we built ThinkUp's billing system using Amazon payments, and Amazon deprecated, sunsetted the product, and they didn't offer any sort of, well, they haven't yet. I actually think they're changing their mind, but they didn't offer a way to take existing subscribers and move them into their new system. And it, it, it's, a, it's, it's gonna be a big hit to us. I mean, it's, it's subscribing, like customers who pay us through Amazon are, are gonna have to come back and repay. Wow. Um, and you know it's it just tremendous. And actually, I'm working with them now. They're they're they are maybe going to create some sort of transition tool because so many people were so upset. But it's one of those things, you know, as a, particularly as a small startup or any kind of startup, like you you're going to depend on APIs and services and hope that they're going to do the right thing. Uh, and you hope that these huge platforms like Amazon and YouTube uh, and Twitter and Facebook. Are, are gonna do the right thing. We're going through a similar thing with Facebook. Facebook, the Graph API 2.0 is way, way more limited than it used to be. And, and we, so we're gonna, we have to, a think up has to um, kind of pull back the data that we pull, which limits the kind of insights that we can create. But it's like kind of like life in the big city. I mean, I, I think it's really important for all of us as consumers as APIs and as consumers in general to ask these companies to, to do the right thing. And and Leo, you you know you have a right to complain. Although I definitely I definitely would just do keep doing the the twi twi yeah. bits or twi the way that you're doing. Um, I mean, you were smart to not become dependent on specifically your distribution. Yes, channel, I specifically did you know? that. Yeah, but it's very yeah. tempting because it's free, right? So people would say, "Oh, this is great." And there are a lot of people build their business on YouTube. Now, when you do that, you all along you knew you were going to only get sixty five percent of the ad revenue. Yeah, well, there's other examples of using. You know, we've had we saw eBay got people addicted to them as a service and then when they owned the market they they increased the the rates uh, opening up the door by the way for amazon to come right. in to the business it does it so does market, market does take care of part of the problem is there's no competition for youtube at this moment 
but my 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 larger issue wasn't with this. What was that this this is my example of how uh, monopoly and search could promote a subsidiary business in in this case Google search favoring YouTube results would harm <clears> me <throat> because I either have to exceed to Google's a lot of pain forty five percent of my revenue or not be on YouTube and if YouTube is what shows up when you search for this week in just Google, that may enough. not be I may not have a real choice. So that's where they can use the leverage of search. Now we have two minutes and then a minute or two. Yeah. But it is all ad sales, so I don't know if it's a new market. I don't know, you know, I'm just... By the way, this process with the EU is much faster than it is in the United States. Google has, I think, 10 weeks to respond. Uh, and, and Google has immediately responded. <sighs> so, so here's the question I got to ask you then. If you were Google, what do you do? Because if someone said, do, do you negotiate? Do you go to court? Um, what do you do? Yeah, because I don't know if there's an appeals process in that. I don't know what the process is, but I don't know. I think you go to court. If you if you don't agree, then they'll then sue. You can go, then you can go to court. Then you go to court. Okay. Oh, whippy. The European court that's done the, the right to be forgotten decision. Right. Right. It seems like this is the core of Google's business. They've got to stand up as hard as they possibly can for what they're doing and fight it out. So the memo that went out internally, of course, Recode got. Uh... uh Googlers, as the this I presume comes from uh, Larry, but let me I don't know I have to go to the very bottom it doesn't say. Um, as the Financial Times has just reported, the European Commission will tomorrow issue a statement of objections. Blah blah blah. They say it's very disappointing. We have a very strong case with especially good arguments, especially when it comes to better services for users and increased competition. So they they've laid out in this internal memo their defense and some of the same graphs that they uh, showed today uh, <laughs> um, I think this is to tell the uh, employees no no we're going to fight this and we think no. we have a good defense this is just the start of a process does not mean the EC will necessarily take action for example they opened and closed an inquiry into iTunes a few years ago we have a very strong case on Android as well finally we know the upcoming announcements will be distracting you can help in two ways. First, by not commenting on pending legal issues internally or externally, and second, by focusing on what you do best, building great profits. So, and meanwhile, today, I think I think the stuff that got leaked out by the about the MVNO, the, the new phone service, is Google saying, "Up, oh, new business too. Let's keep going." Yeah, good, because there might be some temptation to say, "Oh, well, let's not launch new businesses at this point." Uh, you know, well, you know, keep going. I mean, I, I, again, we, and I've said this before. I think I think Google did blow it to a, a rather considerable extent by not understanding political clout of the especially German publishers. Yeah, and they're late to the party now because those, those guys are saying, oh, "Okay, now you're in a position of weakness. You know, what are you going to do to make us happy?" Um, and they could have had a better relationship with them earlier. A mutual interest it was it was possible. The publishers were all you know FOS about their Leistungsschutzrecht and all that stuff, but it was a game. And the game went far, went way too far. They didn't, they didn't understand political clout. They didn't understand paying heat to politicians in the EU because they were all going after Google. They've yeah. been doing it for about five years. And and there's there is the Silicon Valley slash American hubris here, which is going to have a some measure of business impact on. Them. Of course, and not just the German publishers, but the Wall Street Journal, which really kind of well, Mardox <laughs> stirred. Stirred the pot there yeah, a little yeah, bit. That's that's pure. Mur Murdoch has an obvious. Uh, well, here, but here, but look at this. So here's an article in the Wall Street Journal: Five ways Europe is gunning for Google. Europe, feeling left behind by the digital revolution and scared its manufacturing and automotive industries could be next in line to fall to Silicon Valley, is legislating on all fronts to create what it calls a level level playing field for all digital companies. Google is the main target of this. Legislation. This is a very. This is like. Is is Rupert having it both ways? Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't go after Google, and by the way, I believe in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, I think there's a story to be done here, but it ain't gonna get done. Yeah. Amir Mizrak wrote this. Uh, antitrust tax. That's right. That's another front Google's fighting on. The yeah. right to be yeah. forgotten. We know about that. Copyright that goes back to the Spanish attempt to get Google News to stop snippeting and 
data protection, the privacy stuff. Meanwhile, Google stock is marginally up. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so I think the market is saying this is this is uh, Europe blowing smoke up America's rear. <laughs> wow. It sounds painful. I'll, I'll get some tweets for that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one guy sounds like, Le- sounds like Leo's toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the blowing <laughs> smoke button? I need that button. Yeah, we need the blowing smoke button. <laughs> I wish more people would blow smoke up by... Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of a new feature. So, <laughs> now, by the way, let's try to find the etymology of that. What does blowing smoke up your I don't rear think... come from? Googling. <laughs> Google now. I think it's a conflation this. of two different sayings. Because blowing smoke was like blowing smoke rings. And then wasn't there a saying like blowing up your skirt? According to Gizmodo, it used to be yeah. literal. It used to be good. literal. I didn't know if I uh, No, this is this is. Medical procedure. This I think is this not. Is no. They actually did do it, but I don't think that's where the saying comes from, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it just shows they've been doing high colonics since before the beginning of time. Google does is not reluctant to uh, enforce its power in interesting ways. We talk on security now all the time about how Google's, you know, is telling you know, websites, you got to use SSL, you got to <laughs> stop using uh, SHA, SHA1. Um, and now with uh, Chrome, the latest edition of Chrome, Chrome 42, which came out, I think today, I just got it. Um, they're turning off uh, NPAPI, NPAPI or NPAPI, NPAPI. Uh, how do you say that, Gina? NPAPI? Hey! I, I say NPAPI. NPAPI. Which really should have been deprecated a long time ago. It's a it comes from Netscape, mid mid nineties. Stands for the Netscape Plugin API, and that's how Flash worked. It takes years. So worked. That's a long time as. If you are using, uh, if you're on a site that uses and happy to turn on Java in your browser, it won't work. Now, IE dropped it in version because 5. this was only so the first layer. There aren't many sites that still do this. Uh, if you're using Safari or Firefox, you can still uh, still use the NPAPI extensions. It's but this is an example of uh, Google using its weight. And then... For, I think for good. At last, we have them. to... Yeah. Give it a it, Mac lacquer. So it don't. The web, it's the now it's better. kind of shiny. But now we have to no, get on it with the lighter color because now it's all black. I'm not black, but didn't look back as everyone's it looks like position. that it's on the screen. How absurd now to think that not including the browser. On your it's screen, it looks really dark. Uh, what's wrong with kind that? That's of what Microsoft got in trouble for. I know, that's what I'm saying. Is that's the then we go lighter and lighter and lighter. Well, now I have to run a second. That's the that's the, also the issue with how slow, in the U.S. anyway, these things move. Yes. yes. That's a, and tech moves so fast. That, yeah, so, and so basically he said that, that Google was going to outgrow this issue quickly and that the next, and, and the web advertising is probably topping out. I think that's a fair statement. And the, the next, um, this goes back to your YouTube discussion, the next uh, wave of advertising uh, disruption is going to be broadcast advertising coming to the web. And guess who's in a great position for, to get that? Yeah. Google. 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 Hey, do you, are you in the mood, Gina? Do you ever, uh, when you're sitting there with your hot hero sandwich in hand, do you ever say, gosh, I wish I had a Google change log to do? <laughs> <laughs> the trumpets can be raised at any moment. They are at the ready all the Always time. Ready. Even when Gina's not here, just in case Gina flies in suddenly, and says it's word. time they for the change play. log. Before you do the change log, we want to do an ad. But uh, no, okay. would right. you be willing? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Let's change it up. Cool. We'll get the the trumpets again. <laughs> all right. Oh no, you can't ever have too many change logs. That, that was a great transition there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I should have warned you I was going to go to an ad. <laughs> I hear the words, Leo. I've got an itchy ah. trigger finger. I'm like, yes, let's go. Let's do this. Waste no time. Our show today brought to you by FreshBooks. If you're a freelancer or a small business, you know the worst part of the month is the last day of the month when you send out those invoices. Well, for me, it was the last day. Probably you're more organized, right? You, you send them five days before the end or ten days before the end. I would wait till the end of the month going, well, I can send them out on the 30th, right? The 31st. And then I'd wait a little longer say, well, I missed this month. Well, I'll send them at the 30th and this next month. And then I'd wait another month. And by then, I had five invoices, and <laughs> it was just not nice. Back when I, back in the old days, when I was uh, doing my own thing, a freelancer, uh, it was Amber MacArthur who saved my life. I was complaining about this to her when, because I, I would go up to uh, Canada once a uh, once a month for a week and do shows up there, and I had to invoice Rogers. She said, "You need fresh books. Nice Toronto boys created a nice little company." And these will be green. Cloud so. accounting. Here we are, ten years later, five million customers. Use FreshBooks. Everybody knows about FreshBooks. It's the super simple cloud accounting software. It helps over 5 million people save time billing and get paid faster. You'll create and send super slick personalized invoices in less than a minute. I mean, it just, it was such a revelation. It makes it easy to capture and manage your expenses too with their uh, FreshBooks apps. You just use the camera on your phone to take pictures to manage the receipts. And the app also does time and hours, uh, so you can uh, keep track of all your billable hours while you're on the go, anywhere. Just press the button. When you start, press the button when you stop. And it automatically goes right into the invoice. It's so great. They do multi-currency, which is, was a huge burden uh, for me before I started using FreshBooks. I had a bill in Canadian dollars. They do it all. And if you ever need help, and I never did, I have to say this, uh, I loved it, and I never ever had a call for help. But if you do, the FreshBooks supports rock stars. They're famous for their knowledge, and a real person is there in the FreshBooks office. There they are, ready to help you, to amaze you with their helpfulness. I said the boys at FreshBooks. It's really the boys and girls at FreshBooks. The, the folks at FreshBooks. Really great team. Very nice people. And getting started is so easy, and it's free for 30 days, no obligation. Just go to FreshBooks. Dot com slash twig. It's tax day today. Nope. And I bet you're wishing you'd been using FreshBooks for the last 12 months. I bet you anything. Ooh. Next April 15th, you'll feel much better. FreshBooks.com slash twig. This is the time. Don't put that off. You know you, you, know you want to change how you do it. Today's the day. FreshBooks.com slash twig. Twig, and just do me a favor, there's a section where they say, how did you hear about us? Just write This Week in Google or Twig. And this, of course, also yeah, have great to benefits to us. Get Thanks. several times. And now, ladies and gentlemen, They're just so the Google weird. Change Log. The Google Change Log. Again. Encore, encore. Burr, burr, burr. There's nothing in the nature that just have one call. That's all right. We're here for you, baby. <laughs> so we were talking about Chrome 42 Stable earlier, uh, deprecating uh, the N NPAPI API. Uh, Chrome 42 also got a really cool, interesting new feature, which I am very excited about, particularly for the app I work on, push notifications. Web push notifications are now available to everyone. This is in the stable version of Chrome 42. What this means, if I understand it correctly, I, I'm still like researching and trying try this out. Basically, your browser can send you push notifications even if it's closed or the tab has closed, similar to your phone. And this is happening on Chrome on Android as well. So this is giving web apps the ability to send you push notification. Of course, you get the ability to opt out and say, you know, this site should never send me notifications. Um, I, this just went stable, and I actually was trying to find some examples uh, of sites that are using this so far. I haven't found any except for, like, developer demos, uh, but I'm excited about this. Browsers have had, and Chrome has, have, has had, like, little pop-up notifications, but the key here is that apps can push to you uh, even when the tab is closed. Thank goodness Gina was here to explain that because I had no idea, because I, I thought I was... Because I've been asked by websites, do you want notifications? But I didn't know that that's the difference. So now, even if, you, but Chrome has to be running. I don't think that Chrome even has to be wow. running. I I could be wrong. Chat room, correct me if I'm wrong. But that's what makes these different 
uh, than the little no- notifications that you know, you've huge. probably seen on different apps. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. I mean, it also has the potential to be super noisy, and I have a whole sort of interesting. I mean, I, I, I got this whole sort of rumination about how everything is notifications now. You know, from you know the, the watch and the phone, and it seems like push notifications because you know email is a complete mess. And uh, you know, users don't have home pages anymore. This is how this is how apps re-engage people by pushing, and sometimes not so well. Sometimes it's noisy, but um, and and hopefully these notifications, I haven't played with them too much, will be a little richer and will let you do things with them the way that you know the, the notification shade on Android uh, lets you do things. I don't think that they're at that level now, but it seems like that's the inevitable path that we're going down. So I'm excited about this. I think this this will be pretty cool. Jeff, did you? I'm sorry, I think I stepped on you. Did you have a question? I'm trying to figure out. I have some notifications working on some mm-hmm. sites. I'm just trying to figure out uh, which ones. Does does Hacker News do it? I get notifications. Oh, that's from Push Bullet. I'm getting Hacker News. Yeah, I use. I, I've been using Push Bullet for a long time, and 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 I really like it. Uh, Lance Seidman in the chat room is saying it's using you know the GCM connection server cloud, G- Google Cloud messaging. Uh, so that's. <laughs> yeah, so so even if Chrome is closed, so that, that that's pretty amazing. that's pretty new. It's, it's pretty really, really interesting the strategy because you know I now have the the Chrome app launcher in my dock on Mac, which means that all the extensions I add on my Pixel show up as apps available on my Mac in the dock, and it's a really interesting kind of move into the desktop. Like, but I like it. Yeah, that's cool. And you know, this is huge for just for web developers who don't have who who say only want to make an app for push notifications. You don't need to make an app. This will work through the web, Uh, which is which is which is huge. Yeah. So you're going to do this with Think Up? Could use this. News sites, yeah. yeah. The news sites can do this, right? So ideally, so with Think Up, when you have get a new insight, you know, my sort of dream of the native app was like, hey, just let me know when I have a new insight. Push to me when I get a new insight, and now we can do that through the site. Uh, Where all will it push to you? It'll push to you on your on your desktop. Will it also push anywhere, to you? Anywhere you're signed into Chrome. Yeah, this is working okay, on yes. Android as well. So this is right. kind of a big deal. So presumably it will use the notification system native to the OS. So on OS 10, for instance, it'll use the notifications there, right? Or is it going to give you its own unique style? I'm not sure. I think it actually might be it might be a browser implemented notification. Oh. So I'm not sure if it's going to use the notification oh, maybe. bar. Maybe just have it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly yeah. similar to how you get the Google Now card kind of overlay on the desktop. Uh, oh, sometimes yeah. you see the Google Now kind of notifications drop down. Maybe it'll be tied yep. into something like that. Might be similar to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at my settings. There must be a setting. This is this is really new, and I looked all around. I was asking on Twitter, you know, where can I try where can I try this out? And there's a couple there's a couple of Mozilla docs that are documenting the very new sort of web API, you know, that exists. And I kind of saw, you know, like I saw one that said, you know, hello world, um, but uh, I haven't actually seen this in action yet. But this this, this is pretty new, oh, and I we are that. definitely looking into it. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Lance Seidman says use uh, GCM dot on message oh. event. Right. So g- Google Cloud messaging. Right, and you could just send a message to that, and boom, you'd have a pop-up. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I mean, this is the dream. This is the uh, the Google I/O conversation. You know, a couple of Google I/Os about uh, ago about you know how all your all your devices you're signed into your same Google account, account across all your devices, and the devices are aware. Have you dismissed a notification here, and so it gets dismissed dismissed across all your all your devices? I mean, this is the you know the multi-device world that we're living in, and and, and, and so hopefully all these notifications will be smart that way. So I'm, uh, I'm looking in the in the settings. It's in the content settings oh, oh my uh, on your Chrome browser. Mm. On, uh, I'm sorry, it's under privacy content settings, and you have to scroll down a long ways, and you'll get to notifications. And you can block globally, allow all sites to show notifications. Ask when a site wants to show notifications. That's the default. Do not allow any site to show notifications, and then you can manage the exceptions. And the, and we, we, went we see week. this again. Uh, yeah, this is what you were getting, Jeff. In fact, that's what you were getting in last week. Oh, I will cast. wait. Uh, no. uh, are those gone? They're all spam notifications. They're gone. Paint yeah, the last what, people will be mad at me. You took up an hour on, 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 on No, I, You saw how. Leo told me to. No. First of all, <laughs> how that much was a, time that it was took something we all needed to benefit from. To do it. To finish and, it. Uh, so. it, was a, it was a kind of a. Uh, not malicious, but a aggressive. I and don't want to end up uh, with a product. Uh, like, no, 
body. Yeah, that's the one so, thing I fear about this, Gina, is that, is, that, is that bad guys will use it. You may sign up for something and, and not know how to get rid of it, and it keeps on yeah. bugging you. Yeah, I think actually on the notification panel it's, it itself, on every single notification, there's a like adjust these settings or never show me this again. Uh, I know that's how push bullet. That color will say, be you know, more like uh, this the one over there. So I think there's a pretty the high level sort of front, front row level. Control. This one also a got a lot of colors be before you finish. Use your location. You uh, have so to. before it, a site can send you notifications, it'll say, "Hey, give it over and over again until it's." And, and you can see us. it's right. so, you know, uh, not shiny either because I gave it control. a matte lacquer. What else you got? So uh, the that's the uh, handwriting input app is now in the Play Store. Now, Leo, you and I sort of made fun of these uh, handwriting things before. We, we have, we have, and I, I get you. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be drawing on my screen very um, often, but I got to tell you, I downloaded this thing. And I started writing, and it was fun. Like it was pretty good. What I really like about this input. So now this is this is a, an alternate input. It's not a keyboard. They're not calling it a keyboard. They're calling it input. So like voice input or an alternate keyboard, you can put letters on your screen and, and write that way. And Google, you know, that that's how you can write text. It also works with emoji, so you can draw emoji. I think it would be a fine free. <laughs> emoji, which I can tell you is kind of fun. <laughs> I spent a lot of time drawing a bunch of emoji. Uh, just to see, you know, <laughs> what, how they came up. So it's uh, this the, the handwriting input supports 82 languages, and um, it's fun and it's fast. It's just kind of an alternate keyboard uh, to, you know, if if you feel like if you've got a, a device with a stylus, for example. So it, might, it installs as a keyboard. Yeah, it installs as a keyboard, okay. so you can switch the input. Uh, you know, just when the way you switch. When we get some switch, leaves switch, on it and so on. Keyboard, you can switch to this, and um, yeah. You, just so, tap, you tap that little. And you, and you scribble. And it does cursive, it does handwriting, it does emoji. It's fun. Installing it right now. Yeah. Search yeah, for Google fun. Handwriting app. Handwriting input. Yeah. Input. Yeah. So I got a new thing just well, came in. Thank it you to Alex Dennis in no the chat room. Are shiny. This is on the Google, um, the Google's Google Plus That's page. That's a paint. Uh, and I haven't had a chance to try this. Maybe you can try this, Leo. We we. If, you can now task your computer where your phone is. So if you've lost your phone or it's you know stuck under the couch cushions, I guess you can say find my phone. I actually don't say what you need to say. Uh, if you know where your computer is, you can now ask Google to find your Android phone from your desktop. If the pesky phone is hiding Wait, nearby, so you type. Google Wait, can ring it for you. <laughs> okay, find. So you, you're in Google and you type find my phone in the Google search results. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to sign in for your security. Sign in again to get your phone's location. I'm going to sign in. Uh, wow, this is in the search results. In the search By results. By the way, 1,840,000,000 results. <laughs> I think that's uh, all of them. Oh, and you could choose the phone, too. It, it, so it's looking for my Nexus 6, but I want it to search. Nexus 6 is in Petaluma, yeah. Let me search for the phone I got in my hand right now. Wow, this is great. So this is the Android device manager. Do You, have to, you must right. have to have that installed. You apparently you have to have the the latest Google search app installed, right. uh -huh. and yeah, and it's got this has got to be talking to device manager. That's uh, so cool. <coughs> so this says, and I'm getting an, I'm getting phone. a pop up notification that says, Google Play Services device location shared. Android device manager located this phone. There it is. Yes, what do you want a pat on the back? <laughs> what do you want? Accurate, a pat accurate on the back. Feet. There you go. <laughs> so okay. funny. Let me let, let me search for the phone I got right now. There it is. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty fun. In a Google search. Oh, Google knows where you are. Wait a minute, let me see. I'm going to press the ring button, because also in the search result is a button to ring it. Your phone will ring it. Five minutes. <laughs> How do I stop it? It says it's going to do this yep, for five it. minutes. That's you can't. <laughs>
it's a few a few days from now. For some reason, I thought you would. I think on, Inst- on Instagram I saw you getting set up to order. Oh, I ordered the watch. Okay. Uh, Lisa's is the Apple Watch. I guess now we just call it the watch. The, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the watch comes a week from Friday. That's actually Lisa's, the 38 millimeter. Mine will come a couple of weeks after that. But uh, Lisa's very generously said you can wear mine until yours comes. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So no iOS. Good. Well, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Don't 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 fence me in, man. I, I love this phone. The battery life is so horrible that I don't you know. But boy, I love this phone. The camera on the S six is unbelievable. And your really. fingers, they disable touch on the on the edge there. Like your fingers. You get not... a few extra little spurious uh, flicks and flugs, but uh, <laughs> mostly it's. Uh, it, I don't think they're disabling. They they should do more to uh, disable stray. Is there inputs. any? practical value to the curve there's a very minor practical value you can activate it could, can be at night a night clock and you if you do and i can never get this right so forgive me but if you, if you do like this weird, <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> this weird little swipe okay. then you get okay. some edge uh material that's the weather date and time uh it has notifications checking for news updates it'll do sports scores uh, that's completely oh, oh it's a ticker so I think it's a Twitter ticker there's uh, stock results and stuff like that I don't know what the value to that is but and because and you can't you can't see it if it's face down it's still upside down well it's, I thought I'd gotten that fixed but maybe not it's still upside down it's just it's like it's Samsung it's like there we go it's cool. there we go um, but I, I still don't know why I'd want to do that uh, and then it does another thing. You can have uh, up to five people can have their own individual color. And uh, let me, uh, I, don't, I don't know what this watery thing it does. It's so weird. Um, but you can have you can have up to five people have their own individual color, and the phone will, the edge will glow in one of those colors if you get a text or a, a phone call from them, and it's face down. <coughs> Okay. I think you can go Great. on and there, go on and go there on. There is no bezel to the, prevent your screen from scratching if it's face down, right? Well, like, the I next color of light, exactly. though. Like, why, why encourage that? It's kind of begging to be scratched. Yeah. But the whole thing's I think we will down. stop it's for tonight like, and anyway. it's, it's carry on again, tomorrow. But it also I love the and edge because it's, it just feels, this is just, it feels so nice. Get it. Uh, Get it finished tomorrow. Uh, but uh, then we need the leaves and so on. But uh, I think we are getting there with all of it. You'll see. how it looks when it finish but now it's way too dark so. but uh, that was the plan with the first layer and then we'll get it lighter and lighter so, so then we we have a more multi multicolored one like that one but uh, I will say thank you for tonight for those who watched and uh, see you again tomorrow hopefully.